Good morning, everyone. How do I look? I know you guys might not be able to see me because I am in camouflage today, as you can see, right? Or not, you may not be able to see. And you guys are so far away today. Hello, you can see my entire body and my big fat belly. This is what we cut out of most videos. Like, ooh, you need to zoom in on that sucker. That hey, what's up, Roberta? So as you guys can see, we are doing a giant canvas today. I've been putting liquid white on it for three days now in order to cover this thing. It's so damn big. It's not true, but at least 20 minutes. At least. I'm trying to get every nook and cranny. And on a canvas this big, well, we know we're going to take a long time to get down to the bottom. I like to leave the liquid white at the bottom a little thicker. Uh, and that way, you know, it won't completely dry by the time we get down there. A lot of times, if it gets to a point for me where it's just too dry, that it just doesn't work as well. So, I'm going to step in front of you guys. We're going to get the sides of this giant canvas. Try to see any places that we've missed. All right, grab the top. I can always do the middle later. But even on a canvas this big, guys, we got to finish the sides. This is what I always say. Finish the sides. And this thing is gigantic. So I always like to look down the side of the canvas like this, and you can see any dry areas that we may have you might have missed. Go back and just really scrub it in there, right? You don't have to be gentle with this part. You really want to get it in, push real hard. You can see it's about half the way up the bristles of my brush. That's how hard we're pushing against the canvas to get it to blend in, right? Let's see, show you guys my bum. Have a look. Have a look, see. Good thing is I can't see a bum. Oh, okay, good. I'm painting with no pants on for anybody who's interested. <laughs> All right, that's not true. Remember that conversation we had? It was about uh, like the, how the ladies paint with no bra on. Yeah. So I was like, I'll just make, I'll do a painting video with no pants on, but no, nobody wants to see that. So, okay, I think we're finally ready. After literally 20 minutes, probably putting uh, liquid white on this canvas. And we're going to do a giant winter scene. We're going to use all of the Bob Ross colors. So if you have the Bob Ross set, then you're in good shape. So we're going to use all of those colors. And I'm going to use a gigantic amount of paint on this canvas. So. What if someone doesn't have loose places? Is there somewhere they can go? Yeah, you got, if you don't, if you need canvases or liquid white or brushes or anything, you can go to... Amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art to get your supplies, right? You guys can shop my Etsy store, Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art as well. I beat the devil out of this brush. Just get out of there, devil. There we go. And you can go to my website, happyglowlandscapes.com, right? Or you can find me on YouTube or Facebook. All over the place. Wherever, wherever you're watching, I'm somewhere else as well. Let's see. All right, guys. Well, we're going to sort of just let it rip on this giant canvas, right? And I like to kind of step back and look at it, maybe even cross my eyes a little bit and try to plan how it's going to look. So, I don't know if you can see the gigantic piles of paint that I'm using. You guys don't need to use this much paint. Right? You will throw away a lot of this depending on the size. You can shrink this down to whatever size canvas you have. And let's just ping along, right? We're going to go right into Prussian blue. We got the Prush this time. And we need, I'm, I'm acting like I don't need a lot of it. I need a lot of it on this brush. Let's see, why don't we come down? Ooh, look at that. Nice dark blue color, right? And the more we mix it with this liquid white, the lighter it becomes from very dark to it. You know, eventually, if we kept going down here, it would just be white. It would just blend in. We're going to get a little bit more blue here. Maybe with the sign here. There's a big cloud that lives, like, right in here. So let's paint a big cloud right there by not painting it, right? That's the trick. Let's paint this cloud by not painting it. Because if you put too much blue on there, or too much black, or too much color, right, whatever color you're using, 
then it's gonna be hard to keep it very white, right? So you almost have to plan out the shape of your cloud before maybe it comes over there. All right, we just have blue and black on the brush right now just for our sky. Now to finish the sides like we always do. All right, we're gonna have this whacking giant great cloud right here. Okay, we're not really done blending our sky yet. We'll get our arm tired and do that in a little bit. I don't know if you guys have ever worked on a canvas this big, but it is a pain. And your arm literally, it's like you went to the gym. It's literally a workout. And it's more blue, just crushing blue and black. That's all we're doing, right? And the more we mix with all this white paint, even the tip of my brush is becoming white. So you want to have enough on there, right? You get it. Your desired color, if you want it real dark, you gotta put a lot of paint on there. All right, and then as we go down, you can see it gets from dark to light, right? The more we blend it out. Let's see. A little bit, you never want it to, I never like it to be the same shade of blue, you know, in certain places. You can see just from adding that little bit, it's almost like there's a far off cloud back there. And we have some shadow. And it's gonna change by the time that we get there because we're gonna blend the whole sky. All right, we're gonna finish our edges. <laughs> gonna blend the entire sky and it's gonna change. Glad it says time for a bigger um, easel. Yeah, only on this one. <laughs> this can, this easel is usually too giant for all of my, uh, all of my normal size canvases that we use. Way too damn big. All right, we're gonna get some black and blue. I'm just gonna swipe in from the sides. So it flicks all over the wall. It doesn't flick on the wall. <laughs> At least not that you know of. Let's see. Okay, we're just gonna pull over. We're gonna have a lot, a lot of area to cover in this one, guys. All right, you just pull over. And the more you pull, the more color you have on your brush. You can always go back. Use both sides of your brush, right? Might as well. You have a fuzzy on the back of your shirt that's like totally distracting. Oh, do I? Yeah. Get that nice, deep, dark color in there for our water. This hair and makeup comes in to make sure I look <laughs> There we go. We just sold a giant canvas like this, so it's time to create another one, right? And again, you don't have to cover all of your water. You, want to, you don't want to leave this much of a, of a sheen onto your, your water, your lake, your ocean, right? And you don't have to paint exactly what we're going to paint today. You really don't even have to. There we go. Just something like that. All right, it's going to end up changing. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. But just in the meantime, we're going to cover over a lot of it. We want to just have like this sheen on the water. This is what this is what matters. Most of this will be covered, right? So worry about your top, what your top looks like. And then the rest, you know, we're gonna say, we're gonna try to save like a little bit of light area down in here. I gotta remember to keep sucking it in because now you guys can see my, my body. My body. All the ladies are throwing up right now. They're like, oh, I love the painting, but who? Oh, just looking at him. <laughs> I'm yet to see any throw up emojis. So no, no, no right. vomit emojis yet? No, I think we're alright. Okay. Now, we don't know where our water is going to, to cover. We may add more. Oh, look at that. See? Happy little accident. Now we got to change it. It'll just look a little bit different. Roberta Harris says, you look fine, Josh. Oh, thanks. You look fine. That's something that like a... a, a, a an upset husband who's late. Yeah, you look fine. Okay, let's go. Let's do some shout outs. Shout them out, babe. So, Roberta I'm, Harris. I'm painting. Hello, John Krasniak, Ed Smith, Allison, Shirley Benson, Hazel Durdestat. Did I butcher that? If I did, I'm so sorry. Probably. Uh, go to Copa Jones. Yeah, um, I know Durda. John and all them. Yeah. There's a couple names I don't recognize, so welcome. If you're new, if you haven't ever painted with us before, then welcome, friend. Welcome. Everybody needs a friend, right? Hey, 
what I'm doing right now is just just kind of hey, swiping I, over. I got it close enough. Nice. I didn't butcher it entirely. It's just it's close sweet. enough. Just very lightly going over our water, so we still keep these lines, but now you can tell it's just a little bit blue down there. And then we're going to come up in here and just sort of blend these until they're very soft at the edges. Right, just very soft. The, the, the shape will change a little bit, right, because we're moving the paint around. And now you can tell it's not such a hard edge over here. <clears throat> Let's see, I'll do the same thing over here. I don't want to blend too much because I love this real dark, heavy painted area right here. So I'm going to try to miss all that and just make the edges like a little foggy. You guys know me and my fog. I do want to tell you that's a beautiful reflection, so please try not to cover it up too much. Well, I have to cover something. No, that's, just just that. No, that's the thing. Just that. No, you have to want you have to have mystery. Yeah, no, it just makes you want to know what's back there. Just that. Just leave it like this? Yeah. Okay. Alright guys, well. The white squiggly X. Yeah, have a we, good day. We had a good time. Looks like a chromosome. <clears throat> Well, sweet. Look in the. I know, I can see it. It looks like a chromosome. Yeah, it looks great. <laughs> Look at this bit right here. That doesn't match. There we go. There D we go. Today yeah, on Happy can't... Little Landscapes, we're painting chromosomes. Yeah, but you can't try to make your, you know, like at least the way that I paint, we don't try to make our reflections exactly because a lot of it's going to be covered up, especially with this canvas. I'm going to have so much area to fill. You know what I mean? Okay. We're gonna come back in, and you know what? Let's swipe over these just a little, just so we can get a little bit of shadowing in our cloud when we put them on. It's very light, right? Barely have any paint on the brush left. <laughs> it's very light blue. Shelly Benson says she needs to paint beside you. I'd like that. Yeah. We'd have to use tiny canvases because we couldn't do two yeah, we couldn't do two, by 48. Two big ones like this, right? We'd have to do it in the street. Okay, we're gonna come in with our, our titanium white on the knife right here, right? You're gonna use a lot of titanium white today, right? It doesn't matter if you go up out of your lines or whatever, it really doesn't matter at all. You can put it on very thick in some areas, very thin in some areas, right? However you want yours to look. And then I'm gonna show you. We're gonna come around. This is gonna take a while, guys. We're gonna come around over here, use both sides. And sometimes when you're rushing yourself, it actually works out a little bit better with clouds. So you like anything that you want to be random, right? It doesn't need to be this perfect shape. Okay, I want to show you one more thing right here. We're gonna take some of the blue and chuck a little bit in here. The blue is very powerful, right? So don't don't use a lot. You can even scrape it off if you get too much on there. Maybe there's a little bit of blue underneath this guy. And then we're gonna come in. I'm just gonna use the two inch brush because we've got a lot of area to cover. You guys don't have to use a two inch brush depending on the size of your canvas, right? Okay, we're gonna come in, just start to grab that white, just gonna fling it out a little bit, right? We're mixing it in, it's blending all this blue, right? We're blending it in, it's gonna turn into shadows inside of our clouds, right? Take some of that other white, cover over that blue. I mean, wrap it. A cloud isn't this nice shape, right? They look nice and puffy, but when you really think about it, it's a bunch of wind-blown, twisted-up bits of water vapor, right? So that's what we're doing. We're, we're blowing and twisting in the wind, right? Just by making circles, just like this. That's how I love doing clouds. And every time we're making little circles, we're blending it and just making it softer and softer and softer so you get this nice, puffy, bit of cloud. And as you come into your blue and then come back down, you'll create all these little shadows and stuff. So it's a really cool way to do them. And it's helped out a, a lot of people, which makes me happier. Oh, my clouds got so much better after I watched your videos. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm going to take some of that blue and drag it up into here. I right? don't have to go the same way each time. You can go the other way. Whatever's more comfortable for you, right? Just make it real soft. Now we have these giant, puffy, white bits of cloud out here. We're going to take our two-inch brush or one-inch brush, whatever you have, right? doesn't matter what you have. Swipe up, which is just sort of flattening the paint that's on there. 
right? We let, because some areas are thicker, some areas are, are more thin. So it just sort of flattens it out, makes everything really soft and uniform. Okay, we're just gonna go to the side, just barely, right? We don't want to ruin the shape. We're just sort of, just sort of flattening it in another direction, really. Giving it another little layer. Roberta Harris says her clouds don't seem to pop anymore. Well, let me ask you this, Roberta. Do you cover your entire canvas with blue and then try to cover over that with white? Or are you leaving big white areas like this so there's not so much paint on the canvas? Because the clouds will want to blend with whatever color is behind them, right? So if you want big white puffy clouds, you gotta leave big white areas for those puffy clouds to live in. <clears throat> see, just sort of blending my sky together to see what it looks like here at the base of our cloud. All right, I don't like having any real, any real like hard striations, right? Hard lines like that. So anywhere that I see it, it just takes a couple more swipes of blending. But again, you don't want to over blend. You want to have these blues and blacks and different color blues and dark blues and light blues and almost like we made a cloud over here, but we know that we didn't, right? Just the way that it got blended. And so don't overdo it. Don't over mix anything. What's that cloud look like from back here where you guys look? I'd say like six steps. That looks spectacular. Six steps back. Is, the, is there glare on the canvas? A little? No. And a little. All right. I've got YouTube up on the computer, I've got Facebook up on my phone. There doesn't seem to be a glut. Okay. All right, now we're going to come in, right? We're going to leave this area of blue in between this next bit of cloud, right? Because we want to have that dark. We want to go from light to dark to light again, right? Super bright. And these, you'll, you'll be able to see the difference with this cloud. Even if we use a lot of paint, it won't come out as bright as these white clouds over here. And that's because each time we mix, we're mixing in with that dark blue color, right? Let's see, maybe there's a big chunk over here. And that is literally the best part about clouds to me. Let's change and go with the one inch brush just because it's clean. Best part about the clouds is that it doesn't have to look like a certain thing. You know what I mean? It doesn't have to be a certain shape. It can stop abruptly, it can start right away. You know, they're constantly in motion. So it's like we're taking a snapshot of, of the clouds at this moment. And you can see just how much more blue these clouds are, right? They're much softer, much more further away. They don't pop as well because they're mixed in with all this other blue that's behind it, right? Gotta leave these white areas if you want them to be super white. But I like the difference in these, right? They're not, again, they, they don't have to be the same. Even these two are different. So you're never gonna have the same shape cloud. Otherwise, it's, it's just gonna look like a cartoon to me. You paint in your own style, but if you guys are here watching me, it's because you'd like to paint like me, right? Isn't that the thought? Assumably. Yeah, you would think, you would think. Unless they tune in for your looks. I mean, I, I'm not that good looking, but... <clears throat> You know, I'm not bad. I'm like a solid four. A solid four. <laughs> I'm like an eight. I would say I'm an eight. All right. Let's see. Let's add a little bit more shadowing inside this guy over here. Just by dragging in and letting the smallest little bits come off on the knife. Even that's too much. Shirley Benson would like a conversation on where you get a blending brush and what it is. Okay, so I use the Bob Ross brushes. Ever since I started um, painting, I got his set because in my mind, if I, if I didn't have his set, it wasn't going to come out like his was when I was following along, right? So if you guys feel the same <clears throat> about me, that's why I have the Amazon shop. So you guys can get every single brush and, and you know, color or canvas or easel. If you, even if you wanted to have my easel that I use, right, you could get it on my Amazon shop. But so when I first started, I had these Bob Ross blending brushes. That's literally what they're called. There's a one inch blender and a two inch blender. And that's what he used in his show to, you know, make his painting. So I figured if I'm not using the same tools, I'm not going to get the same result as him. Right. So I 
you know, my wife, my sweet wife, <laughs> my lovely sweet wife. Oh, Jesus, that's too much. <laughs> it was too much, baby. You could have yeah. just gone with it's too much of a compliment. That's what I meant. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Uh, she bought me the Bob Ross set for my birthday and it came like a month before my birthday and you know I don't know if you guys have ever gotten a brand new set of paints and brushes but I could not wait that extra month and so I I hit the ground but these are lovely I've never gone I've never gotten anything else because these give me such a great you know result I don't need to change do anything else it just sounds counterproductive Roberta says she uses the Bob Ross brush brushes, but when blending the paint, it still seems to not blend right, getting too many bristle marks. Yeah, too much paint. Too much paint, too much liquid white. If it's if you're trying to do this, it, like blend your sky and you have all these straight lines, and you can see your whole brush stroke in your sky, then you have too much paint there. Like here, I know I have too much paint, but I love how dark blue it is, right? So I didn't blend that purposely. And I just left it thick. In other places, you know, you may have too much liquid white on your canvas. Like when I was doing it this morning, I literally, I had about 18 minutes to do it and it took me about 19 minutes to do it. So I was freaking whipping it. So I may have a little bit too much on mine as well, but I found that I was trying to do a painting one time where uh, I was trying to create this shape in the clouds and I just couldn't do it. I kept putting more paint, more paint, more paint, more paint. And then it got to the point where every time I tried to make a, you know, a thing, it would leave, I could see every single brush. Like bottom, uh, bottom right hand corner of your canvas right now. Yeah, like that. But this isn't, it's not been blended yet. Right, you know but what I mean? that's, if you're blending and it looks like that. Yeah, you have too much of something. Too much liquid white and too much paint, too much color on your brush, right? It doesn't take a lot of color to cover this area. I mean, I barely use maybe one tenth of the pile of paint that I have out. The majority of it comes for the mountains. That's where I use the most amount of paint. Troy Bell says, hi Josh, hope you're doing well. Hey Troy from Utah. Ed Smith says, is that a 48 by 60? No, it's a 36 by 48. I was going to do it this way, but even this big ass easel that I have could not accommodate this canvas. I would need, if I wanted to do it portrait style i would need to put it on the wall and paint it which i've done before all right let's make since we have this you know beautiful thing this is the thing with clouds too like i do the clouds and they end up looking so great that i don't want to put the mountain a certain way that's what i'm saying just leave but, it like that no just sign it throw some birds call it a day it's no beautiful right it's it might, beautiful it might be beautiful but it's not done <laughs> but there's nothing beautiful. there mm. you guys know how i like to paint I like a lot of distance, right? Which means you need to have a lot of layers coming forward. Right now it's nothing. All right, we're gonna make up our mountain. But what I was saying was, you know, you, you have to sometimes cover over your favorite part, or at least a little bit to, to add mystery. Like what is beyond the top of that? And that makes people look, I think. It may look beautiful right now. I could finish it off, you know, maybe this could be the glare, it could be a, an ocean seascape if I had my my uh, my horizon line at the right level, you know. Yeah, you could just. And it could just little... be a blank ocean, and David Attenborough could narrate it. You just know what I mean? With a little boat and a sail, teeny tiny in the distance, done. Call it day. done. Now this video today is going to be long, so we're going to have a lot of stuff in it. You can, uh, you know, go do your uh, weekend shopping, come back. We'll probably still be here, and you can catch the rest, right? All right, since I don't want to cover up too much of my clouds, but I do want a giant piece of mountain in here, right? I like to stay, you know, whenever I was watching Bob, I would be amazed at where he, where he picked, where he chose to leave, you know, what, something visible or cover something just slightly. And especially where the, the, the dark areas and the light areas of the clouds meet. And it just, it, it, don't know what it was and as soon as I figured out what that sneaky little guy was doing and I started doing that then uh, I don't know there's just something about it that makes it pop when you you just add that little bit of mystery like what's behind that little mountain peak right there what does the cloud look like just behind it you know what I mean I just I can't see back there this is gonna be a giant 
long video. All right, we don't need to come too far to the edges because we're gonna end up covering, I mean, probably most of this, all right? I don't wanna scrape this away though because this canvas is so big. A lot of times on our small canvases, we scrape the paint away and that's because we don't want our mountain to grow too much, right? So we scrape a lot of it off and that way our mountain doesn't take up our entire canvas, right? Shirley Benson says you make knife work look so easy. Oh, it is so easy, Shirley. Come on. <laughs> I can't do it, Shirley. Come Not on, Shirley. I've watched him paint for two and a half years and I can't, I couldn't. If I take a knife to a canvas, I'm gonna stab a hole in it. No, you won't. Yeah, I will. You know how I am with pumpkin carving. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Be mindful if you come over for, uh, for Halloween, London might stab you trying to carve a pumpkin. I can't, I don't have the patience. Right, we want, like, you can see how you can shape your mountain, right? You guys can even see from back there. <laughs> Just by leaving these darker areas and lighter areas, you can tell yourself which way to go, what to shade and what to leave dark. And a lot of times, I let the mountain just kind of grow randomly and I'll just blend it out and let it grow and see where it goes and then I'll <laughs> choose where to highlight it from there. And, uh, and that always works good for me as well. But when you want to shape it, if you need a certain shape to your mountain, you can always do that and then go back in and it's just like, you know, filling in the place, like coloring. Why is her dog barking? Oh, who knows? Has a, has a ferret escaped? Dog it, yeah, right. You should tell them that story. Yeah, guys, one of my ferrets, well, one of our ferrets, the the bigger one, the more pain in the butt ferret that we have. Uh, I'm downstairs the other night, everybody's gone to sleep. I'm downstairs playing video games because I'm a child at heart and I love my video games. Don't talk to me about Call of Duty, okay? Is anybody playing Call of Duty Season 5, Cold War, Black Ops? It's got so many names now. But that's what I do when everyone else goes to sleep and I'm not uh, thinking about painting. Then I'll play some Call of Duty and uh, I'm playing and I hear this wicked racket, like the, like the loudest, craziest screaming noise you've ever heard from an animal. And my dogs have gone, you know, I thought it was our cat that came downstairs and the dogs go run over to like greet the cat and our dogs are much, you know, especially one of them is a little bit too rough. And so the cat doesn't really like the dogs, you know what I mean? And they just get excited. It's not trying to hurt it or anything, but... So I'm like, oh, the cat is hissing at the dogs and, and trying to fight them off. And so I'm yelling, you know, everyone's asleep. And I'm like, hey, get, shh, what are you doing? Get over here. I'm yelling at the dogs. And, uh, and I go running over to, to try to save the cat. And it's not the cat, it's a freaking ferret. And he'd gotten out of his cage, came all the way downstairs, and then the dogs saw, and that's why they freaked out and ran over, because they, they don't get to see the ferrets much. And they're like, what the hell is that thing? I want to eat it, you know what I mean? And the ferret was trying to defend itself, and it was it was losing its mind. Like, <laughs> just making these crazy screeching noises. But it did. It, it made the dogs stop, you know? It made them wonder, like, what the hell is this? What is this, this, this fuzzy sock creature that you have? Let's see. Make some mountains up. But yeah, that was a crazy. And then London comes downstairs. You know, I wake her up because I'm yelling at the dogs at the top of my lungs. Like, hey, stop. You're going to kill it. All right, let's see. Yeah, that was a fun story. Well, you know what? We could bring another little cliff down in here, too. You don't have to just, you know, follow what you planned and set out. You can always change it and mess about right that's the fun part to me is it's just playing around letting the canvas tell you what to do right I say it all the time does anyone understand me when I say that like okay I've blended out my mountain I take a step back and I go all right well you know sh I could even put another mountain just in right here in this little kind of foggy area to come down or it may look cool if there was a bunch of trees coming down right if you, and you just let the canvas tell you what to do and then just do it and try it and see what happens. Never gonna uh, be punished for trying something out, right, babe? You just gotta try. Try, you might like it. It might turn out to be your best painting ever. You never know. And 
and all because you did something and you're like, well, the canvas is telling me maybe there's some tree and they could be gigantic trees. You know what I mean? There's giant trees and then they get smaller as they go off or maybe there's some grass that grows down the hill over here or maybe some snow on this peak or rocks on this peak and just do it. Like, just try it. You don't have to, I never come into a painting, well, except for like last Wednesday's video when I did that customer uh, commission. I usually never go into a painting with an idea of what it was. My London said last night, what'd you say, maybe like paint tomorrow. And then what was my response? I have no idea. Don't know what I'm gonna paint tomorrow. The canvas is gonna tell us what to do. So thank you, canvas. Everybody thank the canvas for uh, our paintings and our channel, because it literally tells me what you guys see. I, I have nothing to do with it, I'm just here. It's like our conscious and unconscious sleep conversation, babe. I'm just here. We could put like freaking grass, like rolling down, and get have water down here. Do all sorts of stuff. And all because we tried. You don't even have to, if you can blend your mountains out correctly, you don't even have to highlight them. You know what I mean? Like they're already kind of shadowed and, and high lit, right? So you don't always have to cover them with snow. You can do rock, you can leave them blank. Like we were looking, there was a sunset last night here in town in uh, Lost Sunset, Vegas. And uh, you couldn't see any detail on the mountains. It was all in silhouette because the sun was literally going down over the mountain, casting all this light. So everything was in shadow and it looked just like this. You know what I mean? There was no detail. You couldn't see the rocks because the sun was so bright in your eye. So you can leave them silhouetted depending on your sky. You can do whatever. I could come in with a big darker black mountain and it would change the look of everything. You, do, you just do whatever you want. Literally. Where's my where's my moderator? Oh god, look at that. This is a big canvas, guys. Mm. Alright. Lest we waste anyone's time, let's decide which way our light is coming from. Which is going to look the best uh, for shadowing, right? So let's say all of our light comes from the right and we've got the rest in the shadow. So let's make up some shadow. We're going to do shadow snow, right? Which is blue and uh, titanium white. We have Prussian blue today. I've already run out of the, the phthalo blue, which is the lighter color blues. But we have Prussian blue today. So we're going to mix the blue and white and then we're going to add a little bit of this, this black, blue and crimson mixture that we've created for our mountain. Just so it dulls it down a little bit. <clears throat> Let's also create some rocks. So we're gonna get some uh, dark sienna, some Van Dyke brown. We're gonna go to a different pile down here. Come over here. Let's get a little uh, crimson as well. Just a little bit. Give it a little red hue, right? It's like some red rocks, like out here in Vegas. Red Rock National Park. Hot as hell over there. <laughs> But it is a cool place to go hiking and and stuff like that. If you're into if you're into hiking, Red Rock, it's beautiful up there. All right, we got our rock pile, sort of brownish. So I mean, add in a little bit of white here and there, back and forth. We have our snow. We've got some dark, dark shadows here. We can do grass. So let's, let's not go crazy. Let's put some grass in here. So we're gonna we're gonna do a, a little bit of snow, but mainly some rocks, stuff like that. Right, all of our lights coming from the side. So maybe over here we've got this little chunk of little chunk of mountain that just didn't get covered. It's a little brown bit, right? I want to talk to you guys too. I know this canvas is is massive, but even some of you might be like, can you get closer so we can see the details, right? That's what we do in our weekly videos. So we go, we have a video that comes out on Wednesdays. And that video I really show you you know, up close, back and forth, just like Bob Ross used to do. We'll zoom in real close and I'm doing the details and you'll see it, the snow break and all the stuff like that. So for these live videos, i had had this thought, we have our channel memberships, right? Where you can, it's basically like Netflix, but for me. So you, you guys, if, uh, the members, there's a few members probably in the group right now. They have access to all these other videos that you guys don't see, right? I will always have free videos, always, okay? I will always put a free video out on, on Wednesday that you guys can paint along to, and we will always paint on the weekends, right? Either Saturday, Sunday, whatever it is. We will always do that. But for the people 
in this instance, right? You really want to see closer in these live videos, right? Just for the live videos. That's what I'm offering for our channel members, right? So I think it's $7.99. You go on there and it's $7.99 a month and you will get access to videos that people, you know, the general public won't be able to see. Like when I get done with this video, we'll edit it and then we'll put it out to our members only, right? Only for these live videos. And like I said, again, I will always have free videos on the channel. I still, there's free videos on there now. They will never go away. It will be up there for as long as YouTube exists. And I will always put new stuff out every Wednesday. But if you wanna see the live versions of this video, edited and chopped up and zoomed in and out, then become a member on our channel at $7.99. And uh, you get, you know, all these cool little perks that the normal non-paying customer doesn't get. Right? But again, guys, I will always have free videos on my channel. You do not have, do not feel obligated to do it. It's just something that we offer for those people that can, right? But I will always have free videos every week just for you guys, right? I, I'm the same way. I'd be like, I'm not paying for that. But some people want to. And those people that are really trying to learn, uh, you know, it's available to you guys if you want it, if you feel like you need it. It is there. You can always learn from the free videos or you can, you know, we have we have class videos up there as well for the, you know, the level two paying customer, $7.99. And we have all of my class videos that we'll be releasing and everything else. So just different stuff for, you know, a little bit more, right? That's what's, what it comes down to. You always have free content, but if you want more, you are able to pay for it and, uh, and get more. And that's America, right? Like, here's this. If you want something, be a little different. You can pay, and you can have whatever the hell you want. And that is America, in a nutshell. <laughs> Democracy is its greatest. That's capitalism. Uh, Ryan142154 says, wow, big canvas this week. Big money right there. Yeah, right, if it ever sells. If somebody wanted to buy that canvas, how could they buy that canvas? So if you did want to purchase this painting, you could go to etsy.com uh, slash shop slash happy landscape art, or you can find the link. It's usually in most of the YouTube video descriptions or on my Facebook page, uh, which is uh, at happy landscape art. Um, it's all over the place, the link. So... Don't be shy. Well, they could also visit happylittlelandscapes.com. You could do that, And you too. get all the links in one place. Yeah, I have most of my stuff. Uh, yeah, if you wanted to find everything, you know, together, you can go to my website, happylittlelandscapes.com. And, uh, babe, why don't you just answer? I'm sorry. Because <laughs> I get caught up in these paintings trying to make it look right for everybody. And I'm just over here trying to make them talk. Yeah, and then people are like, oh, what's the, what's your opinion on the situation in Baghdad? And I'm like, shit, I'm trying to paint here, guys. I don't know. <laughs> All right, let's come down this way. Again, I want to leave some room for some grassy areas, right? So we're not going to make it too snow-filled. And if you ever try to cover, you know, if you ever try to get your snow to stick in a certain place and it just doesn't want to stick, don't force it, right? It's not worth forcing it and trying to stick it in there. It just it never works out. And you'll end up, you know, smashing a, one of those cool shapes that you made with your, uh, with your snow breaking and stuff. So don't try, to, don't try to force it. That's what I always say. It's a good looking shadow right there, babe. It is. Get a little bit like on the edge. Maybe there's some, you know, we're gonna have our Gonna have our grass coming up. It's gonna be a crazy scene today. Current time is 39 minutes live. Nice. Let me get a little bit of light come down through there. Take uh, take this guy from around those rocks. And shoot him down. Right. People, I get the question all the time, like, how do you get the snow to really break? I'm like, well, you know, you gotta have the right amount on the knife. 
And then you have to really move quickly. I don't like this bit right here. I'm gonna scrape all that away. Just want our snow up here. All right, because we're gonna do grass. We're not doing the whole snowy mountain, Josh. I don't remember. Yeah, what was I just saying? No idea. Anybody listening? No. No one's listening. No one cares. No one's watching. How many people are watching today? Uh, a fair amount, actually. That's good. Allison says, can you please do a sunset painting? I said, yes, planned for next weekend. Okay. <laughs> Guess we're doing a sunset next weekend, guys. Uh, I wanted to do, um, I wanted to do this painting today like this. I was thinking about doing a sunset sky, but I, I really love that painting that John bought last week. Uh, for last Sunday, he bought it right in the live. Just, you know, he's like, oh, I'm going to, I think that's so, I literally sent in the lead, purchased it right away. Like didn't give anybody a chance to do it. So I figured I would do one sort of similar to that just because that one sold so fast. You know, it gives somebody else a chance. Jeez, John. No, I'm just kidding. John, buy every single one. I don't care who they sell. Two. I just care that they sell, right? Let's just buy every single one. Let's see. You know, some shadowy down here, right? Doesn't all have to be the same color either. Like I don't I don't really over mix my my little paint piles. Because you'll get all these cool little colors that you might not have expected or little patterns lighter blue, darker blue areas, right? That you just didn't see before or even think about putting them right there. So just don't over mix it. And uh, it turns out really nice. What if someone couldn't afford a canvas of yours? Do they have any other options of having your artwork on any other product? Oh, I love you, babe. Yeah, I can, uh, you can go to my store, right? Etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. And uh, I have prints of some of my favorite ones, my more popular ones, uh, you know, some of the spacey ones. I've got prints available, and then we also do, you know, like home decor items, like uh, couch pillows and and blankets, and you know, even on like Fine Art America, you'd get a shower curtain if you wanted to. Little notebooks that I have for going back to school, right? Or, or keeping keeping little notes. Uh, I've got a a notepad basically with my one of my paintings right on the cover so you know there's tons of little things I've got stickers I've got all sorts of little stuff that um, you know, <laughs> is not expensive and, uh, and then I have the paintings of course I've got prints of some other stuff and all sorts of different things John Krasniak says I might just have to have my paycheck directly deposited to you at this point <laughs> I wouldn't mind that, John. There we go. Just trying to get some more, just a different little shape out of that, right? And again, we're going to put grass and stuff, but just for my own mind, I had to do something there. All right, and then you can always change the angle of your, your swipes, right? And it'll just look different. Maybe these guys meet up down here. They're like, oh, what's up, buddy? How was, it, uh, how was it up top for you, right? You just, it's all up to us, really. It looks really neat. I like that. It's all about, you know, snow, shadow, rock, snow, shadow, rock, snow, shadow, rock. Like, it's literally a pattern you can follow, right? You can do a little bit of snow, rock, shadow in this instance. Right? And over here, where I'm not coming down too much because I'm going to have a bunch of crap coming from this side. So, let's leave some snow where we can make our, our little foggy areas right but it's literally a pattern you can do snow rock shadow snow rock shadow snow shadow rock <laughs> sounds like a rap name shadow rock Ugh. i think we should probably identify that to the right of the canvas come on come on the wall looks a little bare oh yeah no this is going over there when we get done yeah but what came down from over there Oh, I took a painting because I sold that spacey painting, you guys. All my all my hardcore fans know about the the space painting on that canvas, on the printed canvas that I had, right? And then we did that like psychedelic space like landscape. It looked really neat. And one of my good buddies, Taylor, I don't know if he's watching right now, but he bought that along with a fair amount of other paintings. 
and uh, it was really awesome yesterday. It was a good day. So now we know that Taylor's house is going to look much better. Oh yeah. Regardless of what was happening before, because of the paintings that he bought yesterday. Right. There we go. You guys can see what I'm doing. I'm just tapping and bringing it down, like grabbing some of that and just bringing it down until I don't see it anymore, and then coming up again. And over here, same thing. Different heights, different levels. And it just sort of fogs up those areas to make them just harder to see. All right, take our brush, swipe up, swipe up. And swipe up on this guy. And it just sort of makes these bottom details <laughs> a little bit foggier, right? Ryan142154 says, Hey, John, go for it, bro. You can go without internet, cable, or electricity. For yeah, you can do that. It's fine. <laughs> for the rest of your life, not just a month. <laughs> Off the grid living, but with great artwork in yeah. your house. Man, this is going to be tough to do grass. Look at how much it bounces. It just shakes the whole thing. But... I said grass, you guys expect grass. We're gonna do some grass. Get some grass in your ass. Just right, come over here. Just have to do it slower. It just, it just doesn't work with that. That canvas is huge. It's I making know. your whole table move. It's gigantic. All right? Throw in our little, our little dabs and then just swipe. You can go up your mountain as high as you feel comfortable, right? The more you swipe, the less little breaky areas you're going to have, but it'll become very foggy and like faded away. And we got this cool little peak in our shadow. It's very much uh, the straight line though, so I want to change it up just a little, cut into that shadow a little bit. And you can tell that brings this one out in front over here pushes those ones back so all about lines lines and colors and colors and lines guys all right let's see if we can't get this, some grass to stick on this sucker all right we don't want to put any down there but i want to line it up i'm gonna have some grass over here maybe there's a bit of uh need these things anymore and there's a bit of like rock little rocky area before we start our grass, right? So we're gonna get that brown, the two browns, a little bit of black, well, our mountainy mixture, right? Let's come in, why don't we throw like a couple little bits of different mountain in here. Let's scrape a lot of it off because we don't want it to be too dark, right? Don't want it to grow too much. Maybe there's a whole other little peak that lives underneath this peak. Ah, touche, John Krasniak said, LMAO Ryan, but how would I watch HLL every week to buy more then? <laughs> I'll just, send, you just send me the check and I'll just keep supplying you with them. I'll just send, send them. Send you a DVD every week. I'll just <laughs> okay. send them at, at leisure. There we go. Yeah, this guy is not going to be cheap, this canvas. It took you 30 minutes just to prime it. <laughs> yeah. There we go. Trying to get these little brush marks to go away. Got that over there. Let's bring it up over this side. Just stay in our lines like we're coloring, right? There we go. Just a bit of like brown dirt. And like I said, we just make it up as we go along, right? And just, you know, we just do it. Just try it out. All right, we need to wash the brushes. We need a cigarette break, but no one's gonna wait. My arm is tired from uh, <laughs> painting this freaking giant thing. Whew. All right, get some clean utensils so we can continue, guys. Gives you guys a chance to catch up if you're painting along, right? Okay. No, I want to make up some grass. So, one thing you got to remember is grass is not just green. 
There's lots of different colors in the grass. <laughs> John Krasniak says, I'm getting the evil eye from my wife, guys. We need to have these conversations in private. In private. Oh, that's funny. Nobody talk about the amount of uh, paintings John has bought. His wife may not know all of them. He's like, oh, hon, I got something to tell you. All right, so we threw a little bit of yellow ochre in with our grass. Again, we're not going to overmix it, so we have all these different colors. Wow, look at that. Wow, that's cool. That is neat. Sometimes you just have stuff happen inside of your paint pile you weren't even expecting. Let's throw some Indian yellow in there too. Maybe some red. Why not? Not too much red though. And again, you don't want to over mix. You want to have all these different bits. And that way we can come in, we can nab up some of that grass like that onto our brush. And then we'll come over here and we'll just start popping it out in almost straight lines, right? Leaving some gaps here and there. This is just very far away grass, so you know you don't have to have it all be super bright. It doesn't have to stand out to us. Just like that. You can do this with the two-inch brush, with the one-inch brush. <clears throat> doesn't matter, but just a little bit of difference in color back there, right? That's all we're really looking for in anything. It's just a little different color. John Krasniak says, Ryan, you're getting me put in the doghouse with no electronics. Yeah, right. Now you won't be able to watch it all. Right. Add a little bit of like yellow ochre just every so often. All right. Don't want it to all be yellow. You just get these little different bits, little different highlights, different things, different colors. Right, guys? We talk about this all the time with the colors. Difference in color. Differences in color. Roberta Harris says, my dining room... Oh, I'm so sorry. My dining room looks awesome with three of Josh's paintings, right with my paintings. I love them. You're awesome, Roberta. Birdie. Or birdie birdie. A little bit of green in here, a little bit darker. Just didn't turn out, once we kind of mushed it, it didn't, wasn't as green as I wanted it to be. You want to have some green back here. And you really want to make it soft. So really dab on it for back here. Don't need it to be textured. Don't want it sticking off the canvas. We just need it to be real soft. And that's why we put those colors on. So you get these different greens and different yellows and different colors. All for nothing. There we go. Blend that together over there. See what other trouble we can get into. See what trouble we can get John into. <laughs> that sounds like fun. All right, maybe it goes over here. You can see how I've turned the brush. All right, maybe you can't. But we were going down at this angle, then I turned it a little bit, and I turned it again so we can be flat. All right, and then we this freaking canvas is just giant. We're gonna have to do this in slow mo. We can push and sort of spread that out. Maybe it ends up connecting back there with this guy, right? You never know. You never know what can happen in your happy little world, right? I want those to be very soft though, so we go over them with the brush. These ones here, maybe the snow comes down a little bit and it starts down here. It's all about, you know, the angles of our lines. Right, so as I get over here, my hand turns a little bit. The brush turns because we want to have it, you know, look like a grassy bit of field way off in the distance. There we go. Bop, 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 bop. You know, all depends on what you want yours to look like and how bouncy your canvas is. <laughs> this thing moves like a whole inch and then an inch out. And it's just trying to trying to do something that should be very quick and easy. And it's making it more difficult. And we got some up in here as we give everybody epilepsy. Yep, that's what's happening right now. Like that. Doesn't look bad. Maybe this guy needs a little bit of a hill though. Don't want it to be so straight, right? 
again, we can come back in and cover over these with our, our snow and everything else if you don't like the way they look. Right? And again, these are far away, so we're going to swipe sort of the way that they're going down, we're going up. And again, just pushes it further back. That's all we want to do. And grab some yellow in here and just sort of like dab in a couple. You don't want to have it too thick. So then I come back and I wipe the, the brush off because again, we're real far away and we want it to be very soft. So I don't want to have too much paint on the brush, but you want to be able to see these little differences. I can't even see it. The, the camera is so far away. What does that look like? You can't even see. But it looks good to me back here. Back here, it looks nice. Could be far off forest, could just be grassy hills, could be a lot of stuff. Could be a great many things. And I like it when the, you're not gonna really have grass come up right up to a snow line, right? So I'll throw a little bit of uh, rocks or dirt or some kind of something to indicate it's, there's a change between the temperatures, right? It's getting warm enough that the rocks are, you know, melting the snow and then the more rock that gets uncovered, the more snow melts away and feeds this grass, right? Come up with a little story in your mind. Again, I just want to just very lightly pull down just so they're they're not textured, they're faded, they're far away. All right, and I don't want to let these two brown bits touch because that's going to make it just look different. I mean, I actually could. That actually would look pretty neat. See, again, it's telling us what to do, guys. If we connect this bit, now poof, there's a whole nother, there's a whole nother little mini hill that's going to push that guy back. So now we even have depth in the same mountain, right? We're gonna make it extra dark right there. The Tori Marumbaga. Just to separate so much. Tori Marumbaga. Sound like something you get from a restaurant. <laughs> I need the Tori Marumbaga. Extra well done, please. The side of pickle. The side of Janae. Some of that, some of that, some of that, some of that. Yeah, Tori was there for my very first painting, you guys. Remember that? All those, all those long years ago. <laughs> well, two of them? Yeah, they were long too, though. 2020 was in there. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's a long ass year. You know what? We might make like a. Yeah, we could do like a far away water. Pull it this way, right? Use all this stuff over here. Really the weirdest thing, the coloring on this keeps going in and out. Oh, really? Yeah. You take a little bit of this okay. dark, kind of mountainy mixture, really throw, chuck in some, some shadows back into our mountains, guys, right? You guys know me, I'm all about a shadowy bit of rock or something sticking up. I just feel like I need a little bit more detail down here since our, our grass came out that way, right? So we could even do <laughs> this. John Krasniak says, Ryan, after the show, he usually has the painted painting listed within an hour. I will be watching to see how long it takes for you to get it marked sold. I believe the record is less than five minutes. Yeah, it is. It used to be five hours was the record. Ed Smith says, canvas trick, when you make it as tight as, you can make as tight as drum if you take a spray bottle and just light spray the back of the canvas with water. I've heard of that. Don't soak it, just mist it. I have heard of that. Troy Bell says, I am still trying to get over 2020 and it's less than four months till 2022. Yeah, right. The scary thing is that 2022 may just be part two of 2020 because it's 2022. Yeah. yeah, it was like, hey, you guys want to have like a little bit of solace? Here's 2021. And then 2022 is coming back at you. Okay, 
We're gonna fix all this stuff, guys. Don't worry. Right? A lot of this will probably be covered anyway, but we're gonna fix it. Some fog. We're going to make us some fog over here. All right, then we can come back in and adjust and fix everything. I just never didn't bring that snow line down as far as I wanted to initially. Right? That's what it boils down to. That's what it comes down to. Now, come back in. our mountain again, right? It's going to come in like that. And since it's right there, it needs some snow because that's where all of our light is coming from. There we go. Now we can come back in with our grassy areas, our grassy knoll. And come back in like that. And it made it a little bit darker, but it is what it is. Again, you don't want to have it be all the same green, right? You gotta have those differences, guys. Didn't you have a question planned for everyone watching today? Uh, I think I did. Let's see, just blend it out at the bottom down here. Just make it nice and soft, right? I was gonna say, if you guys can see my shirt or not, I'm like, right, this is my stupid self. I don't care about the shirt, so I wear it when I paint. Uh, but what's that one song that makes you like, like purse your lips, like oh yeah, and just hit the hit the air drum, right? What's that one song that you guys have? Because mine is Enter Sandman. Like as soon as that comes on, I just like my lips, like oh yeah, love it. <laughs> yeah, Sandman. A little bit of the green, right? A little basic green color here. What I do want to do is try this sucker back here. And just try to get it as <laughs> far away as possible. Mike Gerber says, I see a happy little float plane in that picture, an Alaskan wild wilderness trip. Yeah, right. I mean, he's not wrong. No, never is. Always been right every single time. <laughs> I've ever known him. See, the things with far away water lines, guys, you gotta make sure they're so soft. Because you don't want them to be, you know, right up on. Don't wanna see a lot of ripples in something that's very far away, right? That wouldn't make any friggin' sense. We saw all these big, thick ripples in something that's very far away. Just as proof of how an avid fan John Krasniak is, I just picked up yesterday's shipping label. Yeah. And it says his name on it. Yeah. I just shipped out <laughs> to him yesterday. Did you get your email, John? I shipped out to you yesterday. Did you get your email, John? <laughs> Get your shipping email, John. John's trying not to argue with his wife about buying another painting or not. Oh. But that's how good of a fan that you are, is if I sit here on a Sunday morning and the receipt that is waiting to be filed has your name on it, you constitute as the biggest fan of the week. She said waiting to be filed. It just gets thrown into like a... It used to anyway, just get thrown into a... Uh, yeah, now you have a, like a whole filing yeah, set for your postage receipts. It's true. It used to not be like that though. I, I had don't... one fold, like one envelope. <laughs> you know those plastic envelopes you put like a few sheets of paper in? Mine had like two years worth of receipts. The envelope was like a bowl. Didn't even fit anything else in it. We do, however, keep a QuickBooks. <laughs> in case yeah, anyone's case... wondering, that's... That's how we're running the business, just with one plastic envelope. Yeah, in case the fuzz is watching. It's all accounted <laughs> it's the for. Fuzz. Like, what are you doing, Sergeant Lackey? Uh, I was gonna tune into this man that paints canvases. I was just making sure his business practices yeah. were up to par. Making sure he's doing his taxes. <laughs> my wife does my taxes, guys. Don't worry, she's good. <laughs> there we go. Uh, 
John Krasniak says, yes, I did. Thumbs up, thumbs up. Okay. Uh, Allison says, when you do water lines, do you load the knife at the top or the bottom? See, I saw in the group someone said to that's, load it at the top. That's a $7.99 question. Yeah, that's a class, <laughs> that's a class question. So I, I did see that thread, and I just literally tried it back here. I was like, oh, I'll load the top of the knife because I saw that, right? It doesn't work for me. I have to have it on the bottom. And that way, right, I load all the paint on, like, the front half, and as I come and I'm pushing through, it's depositing it out the back half. And then when nothing comes out the back anymore, I know I need to go get some more. And as it does that, it leaves this fat ripple, you know, and I don't want it to be all the same all the time, but... You know, it does look nice. The closer you get, the fatter your ripples should become. And uh, the way that this, that the knife just kind of lets it deposit right out the back is, I like that. Fatty ripples with happy landscape a lot. Fat ass ripples. So I normally, I put it on both sides, really. I just dab my knife into the little pile of, of liquid white that I have. And that way, if I need to turn my knife upside down, I can, I can do that as well. I, I just like um, push it, slide it, whatever comes off, comes off, and then I can shape it how I want and just let it fall off the back of the knife. Ooh. And it doesn't work good all, all the time. Suzanne Rye says, hi, London and Josh. Exciting news. I have some paintings going in a shop for sale tonight. Oh, cool. Working on that today, we'll view later tonight. Nice. That's awesome. Good for you. We are, we are big promoters of people attempting to sell or paint for sale. Or yeah, except if you do my tutorial, I get 10% of your sale. <laughs> That's not true. Unless they don't tag you in it, which happens quite frequently. Yeah. Oh, people don't tag me all the time. They go, oh, I did this, three colors. I was like, wait a minute, that looks a lot. <laughs> like, I'm not trying to be, you know, up my own ass about it, but that looks a lot like my painting that's right down there. <laughs> Which is no big deal. I put them out for free. Like, you don't have to tag me. Right? You don't have to. It's nice if you do, but you don't have to. It just, when you guys tag my page or, or put out my link when you do a painting, it just brings more people to the page, right? And brings you an immense amount of joy. Well, yeah, no I love seeing... No lie. I love seeing everyone's work. Suzanne Rice says, I tag you always! Yeah. I don't know if she said it like that, but that's how I read it. <laughs> uh, John Krasniak says, Is there an HLL group I don't know about that I need to? Uh, there's the Happy Little Artist group. It's not a... It's the, it's the group that is managed by my HLL page, but it's not, a, I mean, you know, you guys are already, you're already in the group. If you, if you like my painting and, you, and you're here every week with us, then I would say you're already, you're already in the group, but there is a, I mean, there's the Bob Ross oil painting for beginners group. That's the group I talk about a lot when we're, you know, talking about, oh, I saw it in this group. That's the Bob Ross oil painting for beginners, which I moderate and uh, just can't get this damn water right. And so when I'm like, oh, I saw this in the group, that's what it is. Bob Ross oil <whistles> painting for beginners. All right. Give me the water line I'm, I'm looking for, you clown. Ed Smith says, wow, just stepped away for a minute. It's looking good. Ah, come back and it has changed. I do it. If you ever want to see like how beautiful one of your paintings are, I do this quite frequently when I show people like a previous video on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. And I start the video and it's just you and a blank canvas. And then I speed through to the middle of the video. Right. And people are like, uh, what happened? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, he painted that in like 20 minutes. Yeah, like that. It's over now. But it's over now. Touch me now. 
down. Love that song. <laughs> Close my eyes. Fade away. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and what's the bad But I was so All right, I'm not going to scare everybody away by singing. Let's do this back and forth. Are you going to bring that waterline parallel to the mountains on the left hand side? No. Okay. We're going to come in with some forest over here. Okay. Okay. Joshua. I forget sometimes that I paint on like an angle. And then the, you know, may not look correct to you guys because I'm looking at it over here and it looks fine. This is straight. Then I come over here and it's not straight, right? You couldn't, you, know, you couldn't tell me this wasn't a beach back here or a bit of sun. It doesn't, you know, just because we put that brown with the liquid white doesn't mean that it's shoreline or a wave. You know what I mean? It could be the shore. It could be anything. Wow, this one looks good. This looks like a photo I've seen somewhere. Always seeing something, guys. What everyone, what's everybody want to talk about? Who's? What, did anyone answer my song question? Uh, Am I the only one? Yes. That makes a face when your favorite song comes on. Come on, you guys don't make a face. Nobody makes a face when their favorite song comes on. Uh, Roberta right. Harris says Phil Collins drums in the song Air Tonight. Oh yeah. Remember, guys, we don't want the water to be super thick if it's far away. All right, this is a little bit closer so I can see a little bit more definition in my water. That's on porpoise. Man, that shit right there. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. That's a good way of putting it. Let's see, guys. This a lot of this mountain might be covered by our foreground right here. Could we could bring in another set of trees from this side, right? Push everything back a little bit. Okay. I have all this paint. I might as well use it. We may have to take a cigarette break. Like I'm not even kidding. Babe, it's been one hour and twelve minutes. Yeah, I know, but it's so stressful before the one hour and 12 minutes starts. You guys don't know the stress I go through, okay? Producing these videos for you. For anyone who's wondering, he's fine. I'm not fine. I'm having a breakdown. All right, let's see. I'm gonna use the big knife because we're gonna make up big piles. We're gonna make a big mess. Oh my God, look at the size of this. Okay, I like to paint very textured paintings, right? Very thick. Very hang off the canvas, sort of, you know, you get more details that way, I think. If I can see, you know, the thickness of the painting. Troy Bell says, Chain Reaction by Journey. Okay, good tune, good tune. Ryan 142154 says, <laughs> MM6196 says, <laughs> Ryan, we're gonna have to give you a new name. Just Ryan. There's not allowed to be any yeah. more Ryans in the group. When I say Ryan, I'm strictly yeah. referring to... We're talking to, to Ryan, 6196-97198. <laughs> Ryan says, the song that gets me fired up is My Heart Will Go On by Celine Dion. Yeah! From Titanic. You get fired up from Titanic. Okay. I feel it. All right, let's start over here. We don't know what our forest is going to end up looking like, right? So, let's just create one. As easy as that, guys. Ha ha ha. Ha 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 ha. Right, we got this whole bit of trees coming down. Coming down the hill to get a drink. Hey, babe. They're marching, yeah. Every night in my dreams. Oh, God. <laughs> I see you. I feel you. Celine Dion has an amazing voice. And you know what's voice is even more amazing to me? And I'm not even bullshitting. Ariana Grande. Because she can do a perfect impersonation of Celine Dion, which is very difficult, I would imagine. And uh, 
He's just got a wicked voice as well. All right, we're coming down. We're staying into our fog, right? Coming down, and then we're gonna have to. Uh, Fresh. have to be further and further and further away, which is going to... Freaking YouTube, man. What? Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it just crashes. Oh, well, there's so many people on there. <laughs> okay, we are covering in this area. Really filling it in. And I don't want to leave too many, you know, gaps with where you can see the blue behind. I like them at the top, but down where the, the trees are the thickest, down around the bottom, you would imagine that you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't really see a lot of light coming through there, right? Human by Rag and Bone Man is a phenomenal song. So they make it dark. Who said that, you? Allison said that. Oh, I don't know that song. Yeah, you do. How's it going? Yeah, you do. Like this. I'm only human. That song. Pretty close. Yeah. I mean, if you were deaf, that would be pretty good. <laughs> Always Some. cutting me down. Oh, shush. Oh, yeah. Okay, turn it off before we get copywritten. I know yeah, that song. Right, you're right. You're right. I'm gonna get copywritten for these gays, so we. I like doing just a little bit out, right? It's not just a straight line, it doesn't just end, there's a little bit that stops it. These big, thick. And you guys are like, Josh, this looks like ass. Where is everything? I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't have done that so far down. But it's okay, we'll turn the cameras off and you guys will just never see this video. Bye. Boop. Right? No? Okay. All right, maybe we should do another bit. So it's not, it's, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. It really isn't. Let's do another bit of forest that maybe comes in like here. Look at all the paint that we just got off just from doing that. What are we doing? Watch, we're going to save it. I want to do this. I thought it was I... saved. I thought you were just going to bring the water line in the middle of the trees as a reflection. No, 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 no. Um, Ed Smith just mentioned ICP, so we're going to have to end this video now. Yeah, right. No ICP. <laughs> there we go. Okay, we're going to take our, our brush. We're going to push up. Right, it's just flattening everything down. We can do it over here. It's very lightly. Oh my God, it's very light. Okay, the reason I took out a lot of this paint is because we want to have this layer of fog. And we'll have two layers of forest that come in. Right. And that will bring us another layer deep. So just trust and try not to make your fog too, you know, too much of a straight line. And we come in, mix this up a bit. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, now we've got this bit of soft area in between. So then we can come back in. And throw another section of forest, right? Which is why we're not going to lose our, our reflection down underneath. But we're going to have this little bit of foggy area where another line of trees has come in. Right, we want to stay there because we want them to be broken up. We don't want them to be... Uh, you don't want to have these the same... Since we're using the same mixture, right? You've got to have that little layer of lighter color in there just to break up the this dark. They come down and they and they touch, and you don't have anything separating them. Then it's just going to look like one big giant thing. And I find you get a little bit. It just looks a little bit neater if uh, if you get two little chunks of forest coming in, right? If everybody needs a friend, then that means even the forest needs a friend. And so it needs another little friendly forest. 
Uh, Gobo was obviously serious about the Alaskan retreat because he just sent me a picture of a biplane and said, how much would the painting be if we put the biplane in it? Uh, Michael. Michael? Mike bought a big one too last time. Maybe he just likes the, he just likes them big. Oh, I don't know, Mike. This painting's gonna be, uh, the last one sold this size for $400 just yesterday and uh, to my good buddy Taylor. And um, this one is, in my opinion, you know, it's newer. Its style is, is a little bit different. It's more recent, right? I don't wanna say it's better, but in my mind, there's not as many details in this one, but you know, you know what I mean. Add a couple little bits down here. Uh, but you know, to add the plane wouldn't be a lot. I would do it off camera though. Do it on camera. Just because I'm a D bag like that. That would be super cool to put the in that water. Either you know down here if I had the right picture or flying through it, you know. Speaking of guys, people say they like these uh, these chemtrails I do so another chemtrail in the sky just by running the white down with the knife and then literally just going over it a couple times just to flatten it down that's it just a little flat so, so now you have a chemtrail if we put a seaplane in here I believe that this may go quicker than five minutes again it depends on the sea on the plane I'm not gonna do the plane right here in front of everybody no I know so we'd have to that takes time to plan and do all that stuff. Yeah. So what we're doing is just pulling down very lightly because the paint is so thick, it's just making these instant reflections of our treats. And it's turning out fantastic. Love it. Love it. Just doing a couple little more in areas where I think it doesn't really match as the to the top, right? It doesn't have to match perfectly, but it's got to be sort of close. And then we'll come over with the knife, uh, with the brush like this, just on the side. And now you have these instant reflections of our forest. Look at that, guys. That is beautiful. Beautiful. I have to wash this. Yeah. yeah. He's not wrong. What? <laughs> that would be cool. That would have to be. It's basically your that would have painting. That'd be about right here, as it's like, I think it's flying that way. Yeah. It's so be like, cut through the thing like it's that. It's basically your painting. It's true. I told you I've seen this in my mind somewhere. I'm always taking like mental snapshots of something that I want to paint, whether it be the clouds in the sky, you know what I mean? Or something. This is not, this is not right. I need to maybe start a little bit lower. See, it's all about perspective, guys. We're starting on this line. It's got to be this downward line like this, which means our trees need to come down even a little bit more. Just the base of them, where our water is gonna be. Okay. area over here and then we got all these reflections looking good looking good guys what's everyone have to say I just want to sit down here at the end of this little cove and just fish that would be my there's gonna be some big ass bushes right here giant tree gonna look nice again we're gonna swipe up on these just to sort of fill in those gaps don't want to see the gaps. And 
and we can even take the bottom in certain places, right? Maybe it'll come out down here. So we'll have another little layer of water, right? And as the water gets closer to us, in my mind, it's going to get bigger. Down from that, come in like there's a bush, maybe. Or a little bit of land that comes out. Alright, so we'll have another little bit, and you just keep adding little bits. A little bit here, a little bit there. line come in so I could get it to be straight guys it's the one problem about doing everything on video is you kind of stuck looking at it from a different angle Drop my brush down into a whole pile of red. Awesome. So no one has anything to say. Sorry. Yeah, Mike Dub is talking about the plane in the water. The plane in the water? Yeah, like how I just showed you. We could do it in the water too. Um, Dawn Druid says, when I paint, draw, create, I listen to Enya, Corn, Typo, Negative, depends upon my mood. Gotcha. Oh my god. There we go. Just trying to blend these little bits of color from this bit of shadow out. It's almost too dark, right? Can't have it be so dark. Painting, painting, right? That looks really good, though. It's a pain in my ass. Especially when you're doing it in front of other people, right? You're like, oh, look, he made a mistake. Or he did this, or he did that. This guy's it's gonna be a long video today. Bing bang boom. Are you playing solitaire and just no, not even talking I, to anybody? I'm not playing solitaire. I'm trying to isolate the picture of the tail number to drop it on this plane. So that I can see how it looks. But no, I am not playing solo set. There we go. That's a looking nice right there. Okay, so we almost have this bit of forest back in here, and then another little land piece jumps out in front. Alright. Come back in. Let's sort of chuck our light and dark lines in there, right? I like having this dark bit of shore. Gotta have a dark bit of shore. For everything to sit on, right? So we're just taking that same sort of mixture that we created the trees and the mountains and everything with, right? Our three favorite colors. You guys should know by now. Everything a little bit out, right? comes down, it pops out a little bit more. It doesn't have to be this perfect straight line, right? Now, before we do our water line, I wanna clean this off and come back in with some more grass. Some grassy ass. A little bit of 
yellow, a little bit of green, right? Because it can't all be the same color. And then as we get down here, I want to keep it nice and thick, um, you know, and textured. And then also keep some of this dark in there. You want to have these shadows, right? In this instance, we don't know where the, if there's a cloud, you know, up here where the sun is, if this is going to be in the light, maybe some of it is, maybe some of it's much brighter than, than other parts are. All right, we can get this area right here where it's very, very bright. Maybe the sun's lighting up that, that area a little bit more than the rest. You know what I mean? And you just play around and try it out. Wash your brush off if it gets uh, full of that dark paint. Come in again, a little bit more green, a little bit more, and uh, I threw some Indian yellow in on this one. So it just changes that color up as we go. I'll add a little bit of liquid white, right? Which will just make these colors stick in there a little bit brighter. All right, and if you get a little, couple little lines of white, leave it. It's, you know, it's gonna make it look different. It'll draw someone's eye over to that spot be like, oh, the, you know, the light might be shining real brightly through there. Never know. Never know. This side over here, it's like more dark yellow grass. Maybe there's flowers. You never know what it could be. So, or what the end person is going to think it is. So just do it. It doesn't have to be this perfect bit of, you know, grass, right? Grass is not a perfect thing anyway. It's all these random little colors of greens and browns and blacks and blues and all sorts. Yellow, all sorts of stuff. You just play with it until you like it. You just keep, every time that we hit it, we're making it a little bit softer, a little bit softer, and a little bit softer. Right? We don't need it to be big, th chunky, thick bits of grass. And then come all the way down to our shoreline, right? You know, let's go back in and get some liquid white, and that'll help it stick, and it'll change the color and everything else. And you get this very nice grassy little knoll with all these different colors in it. And all the different, all the, the angles that we had. Everywhere that we touched. You know what I mean? You have all these different things in here. And it really looks great. Remember, if you get into, into an area where it's too thick, come back in with your, your liquid white and go and touch in those areas, okay? It will stick a lot easier. All right, now we can come back in with our liquid white waterline. Sort of seal off this area. Quarantine, we're sealing off this area here. Okay, I want to be very gentle. Just deposit that white over what's there. All right, I don't want to create any new shape. Just want to come in and dump it, and whatever stays is going to stay. Whatever gets caught is going to get caught, and it's going to look different throughout the whole thing. Right? I don't want it to be uh, this one uniform waterline, right? It's got to look different. I want it to be messy almost, because that's what water is. It's not, a, it's not a specified shape, right? Something good. What do you think, honey? Always good. She says it's always good, yes. Alright. We still have so much to do, you guys. Why is that red there? What is this red inside me water?
in certain areas, you want to push very, very lightly, right? Just in certain bits. Sometimes the big knife works better for the water for me. Sometimes not. Sometimes I just can't do water that day. I don't know what it is. It just doesn't work. All right, we've got our giant reflections of our clouds still. Everything's looking good. Got our little thing here. What are we gonna do, guys? We could put some big bushes down here around the bottom and then a tree, because we have all this empty room. I really like this area over here. I don't want to do too much with it. So if I am going to keep it, then I'm going to want to have it be finished, right? There we go. Sylvia says, love this painting and learning a lot. Many thanks from London. Oh, good. Thank Which you is funny watching. because I thought she was referring to me. She's yeah. not, that's where she's from. She's from London, babe. Not, not every Londoner is talking about you. I got it, babe. Thanks. I'll just be over here crying. Oh, we're stuck. <laughs> it is hard to do a waterline when you're at the wrong angle, guys, so. I may have to jump in front of you from time to time, right? Where did all this red paint come from? It's everywhere. It's all over. All right, how long have we been filming? We've been filming for one hour and 37 minutes. Oh my god. We're not even halfway done. So why don't we take a, a <sighs> interlude? Why don't we just shoot Josh in the face because he can't make water look right. If you think everyone will wait, if you want to hang up here and talk to everybody. No, I'm not hanging out up here. I'm talking about coming back in an hour or all. Definitely not. Okay, then keep going. Shut up. No one's coming back in an hour. Uh, to me, that looks spectacular. What are you... It's just the ripple of the water and I can't get right. It's just I'm in your way, guys. You Ed know. Smith says, I'm starting to think this painting would look good over my sofa. Yeah, it definitely would. This is a large piece, and it comes with a large price tag because UPS charge and, and FedEx and Postal Service, they charge you this large service, uh, large package surcharge, excuse me, which is a pain in the butt if it's trying to go somewhere far away. And they're like, oh, it's going to cost you $437 to ship this painting. You're like, whoa, I didn't make $437 on it. You know what I mean? So for the big ones, uh, I used to charge like two fifty dollars for them until one of them sold. And then I had to ship the sucker. And uh, I ended up losing money on that painting. So now they are more expensive. But, you know, I would love to sell two in a row, like one last weekend, one this weekend, jeez. And I sold three yesterday. I'm on a roll, baby. I'm on a rowel. I know you guys are sick of me dicking with this water line, I'm sure. But I just can't move on until I can just call it done. God, there's still so much to paint. <laughs> there is a lot. A lot of room on this canvas, guys. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots. Whoop. 
about drop my brush. There we go. All right, if we could just nail this one little piece. Taylor. Taylor? Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> he said, yeah, no. I'm in the midst of something. I do need to take in this pink piece today. It says, make this live a two part version if you need to take a break, Josh. Does it say that? Well, yeah, it's not a suggestion from Facebook, it's a suggestion from Roberta Harris. Okay. What was that? That was the can of paint cleaner. Alright, guys, I think that ought to do. I love having like ripples and stuff, and so I've got to every so often get my. My water, every, my, my experience with water around the shoreline is there's a lot of movement, there's a lot of, you know, could be rippling, could be a, a, like a rip tide, there could be movement in the water, there could be rocks, and so I like to have a lot of, woo, a lot of movement down there. It's beautiful, babe. Thanks. Get those ripples in. And then once you put the ripples in, they have to look right. It'd just be a crazy thing. All right, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We're gonna put some trees in over here. I'm gonna come in, come in, come down. Maybe some bushes here. Maybe something along this side. We're gonna find out. We are going to find out. Okay, well, your moderator is taking a break. All right, I'll we'll take a break. You guys can still comment. I'll uh, just be harder for me to see it until she comes back. And she'll be back. I'll always be back. Let's see. I think if we make this bit curve around over here, there we go. just make it nice and soft though. You gotta have it soft. Gotta be soft. There we go. That looks great, actually. I need to get some more liquid white, but that doesn't look bad. Bum ba bum ba bum. I'll just sit here and talk to myself because London left here. There we go. Maybe this guy's in the shadow over here. These foggy bits. We got his water. Got this guy come down like that. Got him come out. We're going to grab a little bit of that and just sort of smush it in. And then go back and cut it. And that way you get all these little different colors, different lighter areas, darker areas, stuff like that. And then we need to just come in with our, uh, with our filter brush. It's almost like an eraser for me. You know what I mean? We come in, we can just change our, our colors, sort of blend it in just on the fly like that. It's some more liquid white. And this painting today, guys, let me tell you. Mix it up. There we go. I'm sorry, guys, I know. This painting is just huge. I can't keep can't keep enough of my materials and stuff out and ready ready to go there we go a little bit more brightness in here and again you want it to be very soft guys so just let it dab out with that you know, one and two inch brush and we'll blend all these little colors together and you get this nice different colored bit all throughout your painting. All right, little different pieces here and there, and then you just make them soft. And try to save some of that color in there, right? 
I mean, this guy comes down, and this, this bit's in front, this little hill. Maybe he's got some red bits in him on this hill. Maybe some back here, just a couple little, little indications of some red color back in there, right? Except up here, we're going to have a lot of these red flowers. Here we go. Bingo, bango, get all of our grass done. colors. There we go. Different bits, guys. That's all you gotta do. Different little things. Different little textured areas, little raised areas. Just different. So try something. See if you like it. Try something new. Try something different. If you don't like it, guess what? Super easy to to blend out or you just do another painting, right? If you don't like how it looks. But if you do, then you can learn that and keep it for next time. And you'll have this new skill that you can use on your next painting. You know, and that's literally all I do is just try something out and if I like it, then I like it. And if I don't like it, then I don't use that next time. That's literally it. literally what it comes down to like it or not and if I don't like it then I don't want to show you guys that right there we go nice thick bit of waterline way out here Again, we don't like it, we cover it, or we do whatever. I need to wash these brushes because I'm starting to get to the point where I can't do anything. And if I can't do anything, then you guys aren't going to learn anything, right? Man, this thing looks good. Look at this sucker. Again, I like my water lines very soft as we go further away, right? Very soft. And as we get closer, right, we'll leave these ones sort of thicker, and that will give us, you know, the indication that these ones are much closer to us than the other. Come into something right here anyway, so don't worry a lot about that. Man, I'm starting to sweat, guys. Get my sweat on. It seems as though there may be a bidding war for this painting uh, after the thing is done, though. Mike wants it with an airplane. I can't remember the name of the person that oh, said it might sell as well. But I would appreciate it. A little bits back here, a little, little cove where the fishes like to hang out. Just like that. We still have all this sheen on our water. It's looking really good. Looking really good. I haven't done a landscape. I've been doing a lot of portrait canvases recently. So to fill up all this space with a landscape, you know, oriented canvas is we got that. Let's let's continue along right here. Maybe this will be our water that's visible. And then we'll have another tree up here. So we need to make either a, you know more bits of grass or some big bushes or something. Okay, so we can come down. We'll cut in front of this guy. Come down here. Then it's almost like we have this little pond. You know, you don't always have to go to the very bottom with your water. Um, especially in places around the corners of the canvas. I like to be very dark and be covered up. So maybe we'll come in with a new bit of land right here, pop a couple bushes out, do something, right? 
do something. I feel it. I can see where we're going now. I think you should just leave it. Yeah, you always say that, don't you? I know, but if you did water line up where that grass is on the right hand side, it would just look beautiful. Yeah, but again, I I agree, it would look beautiful, but it the more you put in there, the more mystery you get. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure everybody already wants to go there. Or to go here. Okay, well let's see. We're gonna come in do a big bit of hill lives down. I thought the fucking thing was coming down on me. <laughs> Sorry about my language, but I thought the canvas was going to come down and hit me in the top of the head. Why does it look like it's going to do that? Okay. Now you can see we've hidden a bit, so there's like a little bit of, maybe there's a cove right back in here around this little bit of land, right? And the cool thing about the two inch brush is as you push it like this, you'll get all these little teeny tiny little blades of grass can we see on the camera? I think I need to adjust this one down a little bit. Oh yeah, whoop, 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 there we go. But all these little bits of grass that, that come out, right? So I'm gonna come down. You guys on your smaller canvases are probably laughing right now. Ha ha, I'm done before you, Josh. I know, there's a lot. to do here. And it's all about how we angle the brush as we're moving, right? So up here we're coming down on this angle, like there's a hill, right? And then as we get over here, the brush is rotated flat, so it's straight across now. yellow to it and do all the other highlights and stuff as well. And as for right now, you can see all these different planes that we're on, right? That one, now a little bit flatter, now a little bit flatter. Who knows, we may even end up going you know, upwards. All we're doing is covering up this stuff down here. I love you, but I have to tap out today. You have to what? Tap out. Where are you going? The smell is giving me a headache. Oh, of the paint thinner and stuff? Of all of it. Okay. I will continue to write from comments. Uh, Chris Doucette just showed up. Hey, Chris. I will continue to write from comments, just from a different room. Okay. It's getting to the point where the paint fumes are getting to London. I totally get that. Watch this, we're gonna do this. We're gonna make a big old bush over here with our, just with our two inch brush, right? Cause we need it to be so gigantic. And I wanna have all these little different bits that come off of it, right? Just like that. Make it real dark at the bottom. All right, got our black base color down here. And then we'll go highlight over everything. But you wanna have these dark shadows down here at the bottom grass, this big bush over here, a big part of something, maybe it's two or three bushes, we don't know. We don't know what it is. We're going to have some giant, uh, some giant trees over there as well. So we don't know what it's going to be. I'm just trying to get some of my shadowing in here. Different things, we're hitting the brush, you know, now we're pushing up, we're going different angles, just making all these little messy shapes, right? Just a bunch of mess. What's it look like on the camera? It's not bad. Just a bunch of messiness. All we're really doing, just making different shapes, you know, different things, and all this is just a bunch of grass. I just don't want it to be all on one, you know, uh, solid straight line, right? You guys know me by now. Then we'll throw our big old tree in over there. So what I need to do is get another brush. I have two of the two inch brushes. All right, two of these two inch bad boys. I'm gonna get a little bit of liquid white. We're gonna run down in here through our yellows on both sides of the brush. Go back, get a little bit more liquid white, run it through again, two times. Now we can come back in 
and stay separated from our dark area back here, right? Which makes this its own little, its own little hill of grass, right? We come down, maybe this guy over here, returning more on a flat angle, right? And I don't want to get rid of all of them. It's brightening it up. It's changing. There's little bits and different colors throughout everything. You don't want to get rid of all of those colors. You can even take some of our red, mix that in, so we get this different color orange, right? And we may throw a big bit of tree down in here. There's all sorts of things you can do, right? Totally up to you, though. I just like going over them very softly so they're not just stuck out there. You know, all that texture is still very soft. Really want to get the tops of my thing nice and grassy looking. All right, maybe there's a big bit of dark in there. Just for no reason. There's some dark bits of grass in that area. And we'll just darken it up a little bit. Just a little bit of shadow. Hey. Yeah. Yes. Look. What's up? What is that? John Krasner empty single. Wow! Jesus Christ, John. Thank you for your super chat. John just super chatted the shat out of me. You are my, you know, one of my favorite fans, he, John. He did say, however, that you have to spend the money by taking us out for dinner. <laughs> taking who out for dinner? Me and Bailey. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, get this bit of grass down here. I have our our giant like bush. What do you think, babe? I think it looks beautiful, obviously. Even though you were like, you shouldn't do that. You should leave it like this. Well, yeah, but okay. obviously I'm not the painter. You are. Whew. So yeah, John did a super chat, guys. I don't know if you know about super chat. I did not know until our channel got monetized. What Super Chat is, it's uh, like a tip that you can send. Um, you get all these little emojis. This is part of the perks of being one of the members, your emojis and stuff like that. Your your comment will be highlighted and stuck at the top for longer, so we'll be able to see it and, and respond. Just all different sorts of things that uh, becoming a member is, is helpful for. All right, now we're gonna come over here. I'm gonna make this huge bit of forest, a couple trees on this side. All right, they gotta be taller than our mountain to have them be closer to us. So, let me do this. Just like that. And again, you guys don't need to have as much paint as I have because I'm doing this giant uh, canvas, you know what I mean? Yours doesn't need to look. A lot of times it looks cool if you leave a little bit of uh, trunk. It's kind of showing in between, like the grass didn't get there. It doesn't have to be perfect all the time, right? Keep telling that to people. Somebody said on uh, on uh, Facebook, it was like, you know, I don't, I don't, I like my trees to be standing straight up because one of my trees was at an angle like this. I was like, it doesn't have to be perfect. And it doesn't have to stand up straight all the time. It really doesn't. Do whatever it is that we want it to do. And that's that, ladies and gents. I come in like this. I'm gonna put a couple more bushes underneath this guy. I wanna have him real nice and dark. And all the bristles and the branches, they don't have to go out the same direction or you know, the same thickness everywhere. Do want it to be filled in as we get around the bottom, but once we come up to the top, it's really no big deal. There we go. Just fill those in just like that. It's gonna look neat. Gonna look neat, guys. That was just one tree. It took up my entire pile of paint. So now I gotta create another giant bit for everything else that we're doing. 
a huge giant amount of paint. Let's come in and make another huge giant tree. Right, again, they don't all have to be straight or the same or you know the branches don't have to look the same. Nothing has to be similar on it. You just want them to be nice and thick and goopy, right? That's what I always say. Be goopy. Maybe there's some, there's a little guy in between these guys, right? We may not see a lot of them. They may end up getting covered up, but we'll have to find out. That's always the fun part of it. You guys can see I'm using mine at this upward thrust, right? So we're pushing up into the canvas at this angle with our with our finger, right? It's not so exaggerated. I'm just pushing up, and that way you get these upward style branches that are reaching up and, and growing out, right? Versus the ones that are all saggy and drooping down. I don't like those ones so much. All right, we're gonna have to come over here. Jeez Louise. God, the cool thing about these big, like, Stage 3 canvases, the Pro Series canvases, right? If you could call yourself a pro, is that you can make these little mini scenes along the edge, right? So over here, there's a whole evergreen tree that you may never even see because you're in the front and you're not along the edge, right? Maybe there's a couple little bits over here. You guys are like, it'll make you kind of turn and go, what is, what is that on the, on the side? You know what I mean? Or if you're coming up along your, you know, you're in your your house, you're walking down the wall, down your hallway, you see this sucker, and you can see there's just one perfect pine tree headed down the side of it, and you're like, what is that? It makes you want to turn around and see what it looks like, right? Wow, this one is, I just looked back and caught a look at the camera, uh, at the computer screen over there. It looks fantastic. My goodness. I hope this one sells soon. Otherwise, I may end up taking it down because I like it so much and just keeping the sucker. So if you want it, better get it quick, right? Be faster than John Krasniak. Which, again, thank you for your super chat, John. I really appreciate that. Okay, we're going to come over here now. Man, that's looking good. You know, guys, I'm going to put one big whacking tree in here, too. You guys know me. You know me. You know, you know, I'm gonna do it right now too, just so we don't forget. You guys are like, no, don't, don't touch it. Oh my god, don't do it, no, no. No, don't do it, right? We're just gonna go. And now this big stick just lives right here. Oh yeah, oh, it's there. It's there. What did you do, Josh? What have you done? Just trust me, guys. Man, as long as it's the right thickness, it'll uh, per it'll just push everything over here, just push it further back, and this will end up being the closest thing to us, right? All right? What does everyone think about when I do something crazy like that? Like in your mind, are you like, oh my god, I would never, I would never do that. Why would he want to do that to himself, right? But a lot of the times, guys, that's what makes your painting cool. Is when you, you know, you did this beautiful thing, and then all of a sudden, just wham, right through it, this whacking tree branch, right? We could even do another one. We could do multiple ones over here. It could be a whole forest of these trees. Really could. that will do like a branch come down maybe it's got a little bit of saggy leaves on it right and then we can come back and fix stuff later and i'm gonna do another branch maybe there's another bit of saggy leaves over here and they should pop really really brightly against all that dark area right another one down here just different things, different things you can do, right? Maybe this guy just comes straight out. He's just got a little, he's got a little bit of stuff on him. You never know which way 
they're gonna go, what's gonna happen, where it's gonna fall, right? And just like that, we have this wicked cool little tree over here too. It's gonna push everything just straight back. And in order for it to do that, it has to be taller than the trees over there. So we are going to make that happen. Just like so, guys. Just like that. That's gonna look good. Okay. Now, I like having... There's a couple little bits of grass that are growing down the hill over here, right? Just a little bit of dark. Just some shadows, very faded away. It's just grass, right? We're gonna have something down there. Little bits that are growing. Lift up just a little bit like that. Bingo, bango. And then we'll put some other stuff. Maybe the other one will get covered anyway, but who knows. But we'll try, we always try, right? We'll try something. Try the yellows, try the reds. Just different colors, right? That's what is going to make it look nice. You'll have these different bits, different greens, different yellows, bits of red in there. The red, you don't need a whole lot of, right? But you want to have those little different bits in there. More yellow. Just give it some more, some more depth, some more texture. Where you have those big dark green areas, put some yellow areas in there, put some red areas in there. Give it some, give it some flow, right? Over here, these ones go this way. You just gotta play with it until it looks correct to you. And if it looks correct to you, then it should look correct to someone else. A couple little bits over here. That's what's cool about grass is it's literally just a big giant mess of texture, really. Big giant mess, but you don't want it to be too textured because then it's going to clash with your with your trees and stuff, right? So it's a fine it's a fine line, grass. Grass. The grass is a fine loin of grass. Over here. Alright, like that. Just make them nice and thick up on the edge like that. We got this differentiation that we're on a different plane than that one back there. Even though we're going in the same way, we fogged it up, we made it all crazy, right? Get all this grass in here. Just different little bits, different little textured areas that someone's going to see and go, wow, that's neat. You know what I mean? There we go. And it's cool. And again, it's just got to look messy. That's all. That's really it. A couple light areas, a couple dark areas, and some mess. That's really all you need. And then we'll go back over this, uh, this area down here in the tree and everything when we get to it. Add some texture, add some stuff down there. Let's go over here. We're going to get our piles of paint back together because they get all smushed up right all the rest of the black and blue and crimson all of my dark colors are gone now there's so much paint on this uh, canvas it's gonna weigh more I mean, what the hell? there we go I had the paint sitting out all week from last week's painting so I had to get rid of some of that skin that it likes to grow, right? There we go. Some of the green, just some of the brown in there too, why not? Just all these deep dark colors is what we need. Because we want it to be dark. Now we're going to get this brush, we're going to get it all sorts of filled in 
all thick and goopy with the paint. And then we're going to come back in and it makes all these crazy cool little shapes. You know, little, little bushy shapes, little leafy areas, right? And we want to do that all throughout this bottom right here. Because then we can come back in and uh, highlight it. Make it look really good. It's all the same concept, just on a bigger surface. It's the same things that we do all the time. We're just doing them on a bigger surface today which you have to expand your, your perspective, right? Expand your mind. Uh, let's see, these guys, they come out like this. There's some dirt, some land underneath them, right? Then we can add and go back in and we can throw some green on that and brighten it back up and do all the stuff we need to do to make it look like our other grass, right? Yep. You come back in and throw in our little, our little messy grassy area back here. Bam. Now we have done it, guys. We have done it. Okay, I'm gonna wash off this brush. We're gonna get down to some, some liquid white. You can see how this, how the water is almost white. We didn't even, didn't put much color on it left a lot but it reflects that white in the in the sky as well so it's just it's really cool john krasniak says in that grass right there in the front it would look cool if no right there in the middle if you put like a little log so that someone could sit and look out into the water true sure. do that that would look neat that would look neat that's where i would go sit if i was going to fish Get out there and go fishing. All right. Man, it's crazy. Yeah, a lot of this water, this white area we never painted, this white area we never painted, right? It looks really cool. It looks like we, we did that on purpose, right? Because of the glare of the water. When in the beginning, if you were here in the beginning, you know what happened? Babe! Yeah. Is oh my god, watch this. Oh, that's just fantastic. What's wrong? My sound has been off on the camera for two hours and thirteen minutes. Two hours and thirteen wasted minutes of footage because the microphone on the camcorder was off. What? It's not you, it's me. It's me. Shirley Benson says, it looks like Wyoming. Oh, nice. Yeah, Hazel dang. says, we can hear you. <laughs> well, yeah, on Facebook and YouTube, but I have a camera that, that films, and then I go back in, and I zoom back in and forth and do all that. Mm. All right. I'm sure we can fix it, or do a voiceover or something. Just turn it into a two-hour time-lapse. Or, Fuck. Or this you was could, gonna be a good video too. Or you could just become like Charlie Chaplin. Just do it in silence. Yeah. <laughs> he was very successful. Silent filming it. Man. He was very successful at what he did. True. All right, let's come in. I'm just gonna add a little bit of bark to our trunk of our tree. In different places, it doesn't need to be perfect. And you don't really want it to be in the same places. You know what I mean? So anywhere that there's a gap, I like to have a trunk next to it. If there's a gap here, there's a trunk, gap, trunk. See what I mean? Just kind of go back and forth. And then a lot of it will get covered up anyway. We don't know what's going to show when we get finished doing all of our, um, our green highlights and stuff. So... 
don't worry because you if you have a whole, you know I normally don't like to do it from the top to the bottom I have done it in the past um, but nowadays I like to keep it like this and then when we're going over it some of it gets covered and some of it doesn't it ends up looking really neat all right we're gonna get some more liquid white I'm gonna use this size 10 fan brush uh, around the bottom but we're gonna get our micro fan brush out for the top and even on this this is almost a three foot tall tree I'm gonna use a brush that's this tiny okay it's so little oh it's so little Shh. then we're gonna do this get our green and our liquid white right in through there and then we're gonna come up and just touch and whatever comes off comes off that's literally it. I'm not trying to make a shape. I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel. I'm just touching it. And you'll have areas that come off and stay green and other areas that stay dark, which is perfectly fine. That's how it's supposed to be. You're never gonna have a tree that's all the same green all over the place. You'll have no depth. So, gotta have the dark save the darks man save the whales and save the dark colors because if you don't have any dark guys your painting is not going to look good your tree will not look like a tree and you'll be sitting there going why doesn't it look like a tree why doesn't it look like Josh's well that's because you went through and covered up every single piece of dark that you could find right which is not what you're supposed to do. Your tree is not supposed to be all green. It's supposed to be about half and half, really, when you think about it. Maybe even more shadow than highlights in some, some cases. Okay, over here, same thing. Just gonna go down and touch, kind of staying on our branches. And then whatever sticks, sticks. Whatever doesn't, doesn't. And you don't force it. So when you go forcing it, that's when you're going to start to make mud. It's going to look all funny. It's not going to look how you intended it to look. Maybe we can only see just a couple little bits of that tree back there. And every so often, go back in, wipe off all the dark paint, you know, that you pick up every time you touch this brush to the, the tree. Wipe off all that dark paint, and then come back in, get yourself some fresh color, and go back out. See? Just like that. Now, I like these micro fan brushes. You can find them on my Amazon shop, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. You can find all these brushes over there. Okay, but they, they, they're they small. They can give you these, these certain shapes that I like, right? Ever since I started using these, I think my trees got better, and it's just from the shape of the brush. It's nothing that I changed really besides having you know these little mini bristles versus the giant uh the giant ones that the bigger brushes create right just went halfway down that tree and sometimes it looks cool to leave it sort of in the shadow leave a little bit of mystery maybe you don't know which uh which bristles are for which tree you know what i mean and sometimes they're just packed in there so tightly you can't tell if this goes to this tree or if this goes to that one in the middle or maybe it's a longer piece this one over here but the biggest point guys the biggest thing to remember okay is that i'm awesome no that uh you don't want to cover up all of your darks okay you got to leave space in between your trees and space for the dark for the critters right so the critters can go live in there And it's really to make your tree look like 3D, like it's popping out of the canvas. All right, and in order to do that, you gotta have dark, shadowy areas with little bits of light poking through. Just right on there. All right, now here around the bottom, you don't have to make it as bright as it is up around the top, right? It's almost the same concept as our mountain. We want this very crisp, this more kind of faded. 
So very crisp in color up at the top. And then as it goes down, it gets darker and darker and darker until there is none left. Right, you can always take your uh, yellow ochre, mix that in with your greens, and you'll get this different shade of green that uh, ends up looking great. You need to come over here and do our side of our, our uh, canvas. Because these canvases have these large yellow they have these large sides you know like an inch inch and a half over here you have to you know finish your edges that way the buyer will have something that's going to catch their eye it's going to make them look at it harder especially as they're coming down the uh the hallway and they see the side of this sucker and it's, it's just a whole little mini scene a whole little tree just sitting out here they're gonna go, oh, that's gonna make them wanna turn around and see what else is on the canvas. What else did this did this painter stick in here? Right? And it makes you gives you that little mysterious bit where you just you gotta go in and find what the heck. Why is it like that? What is causing this to look like that? Right? That's what I look at when I look at art. You're like, what is behind here? What's over to this side? This is just a little bit of uh, yellow ochre in with our liquid white onto our tree, right? It's always some bits of a tree, just straight yellow ochre and whatever else we've mixed in over here. There's always some parts of a tree that aren't, you know, as green as the rest or maybe parts of it that are dying. Branches, bare branches, different stuff like that. Maybe these bristles are a little bit different colored maybe they're a, you know a different species of tree that's kind of grown in with all these other ones that are out here never know just give it it just makes it look neat it's a little bit different color right everyone's expecting to have green trees so i throw a little yellow ochre in mine every so often just trips them up trips you guys up, makes you guys think like, oh, well, I guess you don't just have to use blue for the water and you don't just have to use green or just put snow on the trees every time. You don't just have to do anything. You don't even have to deal with it. If you don't like the way it looks, you can change it, guys. Uh, that yellow looks so good. I want to put a little bit more, but don't overdo it, right? Don't got to overdo it, Josh. Don't want to be like, I wish I would have stopped, right? That's the famous last words. I wish I wouldn't have done this. I could have just stopped. It would have looked so great. So take a step back. You know, this one we've been filming for hours, almost three hours now. So take a step back and uh, look at it every so often and see, you know, what might look better if it was a little bit brighter down here. Instead of all these little shadowy grassy areas, we could add some lighter areas, right? And then you just go back and you try. I'm never gonna knock you for trying, right? At least they shouldn't. And again, we're not gonna cover up all those dark areas. I wanna leave some of them. And now we have this much more depth filled, you know, high lit, shadowed bits of field right here, right? And it's all just a difference in color. Right, you guys are right. You got it. You got it. You got it. There we go. Okay. Yeah, I'm running out of room over here. Okay. Now let's just go nuts crazy. We're gonna mix our red and our yellow ochre to create this beautiful, like, pinkish, uh, orangish color, right? Beautiful color. We're gonna tap our brush into it like this. We're gonna come back in and start creating our brand, our uh, our bushes, right? And we got a bush that lives over here. Always go back in, dab off your your brush. Come back in, more liquid white, more paint. And remember not to cover all of your shadows, right? Hello, almost fell. Anybody see that? These blankets are getting all tangled up. All right, now we'll come in again. We'll get some more liquid white, and maybe this next bit of tree or bush is like green. Okay, so we're gonna leave some sections 
dark in between our two bushes, right? Got to keep some separation in there. Don't want to be too much, but you want to be able to tell there's a different thing. There's something different going on down there. Get all that off. Need to get out more liquid white, guys. Jeez. It's been a while since I painted on a canvas like this, this size. So I've forgotten just how long it takes when I'm not doing a video just to, to create something this big. So remember, for anyone watching, this is available for sale. Uh, I'll be listing it when I get done. So keep an eye on my Etsy shop. If you follow me on Etsy, you'll get a notification saying that I have a new listing in my store, right? Uh, so if you do want it, some of the times they go very quickly, as John proved last time, that they can go in five minutes. And uh, some of the times they take a little bit longer to sell. So all depends. All depends on who wants it the most and how quickly, right? There we go. More liquid white. I have not used this much liquid white in ages. Okay. Our lid back on. Go, there we go, there we go. All right, so come back in, got our half inch round again. Maybe let's go back to that yellowish, reddish color, but more reddish, more on the reddish side. And we'll come back in and maybe there's a really bright bit of bush right here, right? And again, we're leaving areas in between that are dark, so we separate our bushes. Gotta have the separation. And now I'm gonna come back in and do this one, that yellow ochre, that same sort of uh, first kind of bush color that we went with. Get this guy out here. Just like that. Again, leaving space. In between, so we can tell there's four different bushes here, right? And everyone counts the four bushes. Can you see the four bushes? There we go. Man. This guy's got a little bit of a little bit of life just growing out over here. Looking good, looking good. Got our trees, got our trunks, got everything. Got our grass. The grass, guys, got the grass. Wash this brush. We're gonna take a step back and look at this sucker, see what else we need to do. I know we gotta add our branches over here. So we can even do that nigh on now, right? Come over, get our greens. Again, I don't wanna put too much color. We don't wanna cover up all of our shadows, right? Gotta have some depth in there. Don't cover everything. There we go. We're on this guy. Bam, bam, bam. Make sure our greens are a different green than what's over here, right? Otherwise it won't stand out. Then we'll come back, put our little bit of our greenish color here. But again, not too much. Don't want to have too much color. There we go. Oh, we forgot our guy down here. We forgot our little guy. There we go. Again, adding a little bit more white to that one to make it different from the green that's down below, right? Just kind of change it up. And again, not cover all of our shadows, right? That's a major part of it. Don't cover your shadows. Got our grass, got our bits, got our little stuff everywhere. We got these little things, it's just stuff. And you just keep going until you stop. I mean, all these could be little flowers growing up, little dandelions, right? And there's a little bit of red over there, or I mean, that looks cool if that goes and then this goes out this way. Like there was a little hill right there, right? So let's take this and we'll make it go another way, just a different plane. 
different little plane of existence. All right, a little bit of green, a little bit of red and yellow, a little bit of Indian yellow. And then we're just kind of dabbing them in until they sort of blend together. So you have all these little differences in color throughout the entire thing. All right, different planes. Not planes like airplanes, planes like different planes of grass, right? Different angles, straight, up, up, right? So there's a, there's like a line going down, then we come across the middle, then we go up the other side. All depends. All right, John said he wanted a log. Somebody wanted a log to sit on right there. So if I was gonna do a log of a branch, maybe it's like that. Maybe it comes back in, and we just dark this area out, right? Watch. Take our black, we want a really dark, just like that. Now we got our little, got our little loggy bench. Right, it's nice and thick and textured. Take our brown and our white, give it some bark, right? So for this one, let's go like this. I'll get this nice, like really thick textured chunk of wood that you're gonna be able to feel when you actually touch it. You know what I mean? That's the cool part. There's a long, there's a branch that comes up. It's like right, right there, there's a little branch. Branch, my man. And it comes up off the top of the thing. Never like it to be straight, so I always gotta change it and put stuff in it, right? And then underneath, maybe there's just a little bit of shadow in our grass. And we can always go back in and just put some grassy bits around it. Now you got a log sitting down there to sit on at that bottom of our field, right? Really neat looking. Really? Okay, what else did I need? I need to put some trunk on this guy and then we'll be good. Throw some sticks and twigs down into these dark areas down in here. Holding these trees up, right? All these little branches, the bushes, they gotta have something holding them up. Okay, let's get some more of our brown, more of our white. And again, we're not gonna over mix it. Maybe take a little bit of our crimson if we can find any. A bit of the red down here too, why not? Okay, not gonna over mix, pull it out. Come in and then let's do, let's do this side. All right, got our, our little tree starting to come together. Wipe the knife off when it starts getting too full. And then our tree will just sort of grow right through our entire seam and start to see it come together. shows through up here it's very thin some trunk on this branch a little bit of bark everywhere a little bit of bark over here bark over there bark of this tree that branch over there you still want to forget anywhere a little bit of branch a little bit of branch my man all right, take a little bit of that dark, mix it in with our brown now to make it much darker, almost this blackish brown. All right, and then we're gonna come in from the other direction and sort of meet in the middle with that. You really wanna get this like, deep dark brown in here. All right, we're putting that on the shadowy side of our tree so we have this bit of texture and bark, and you'll be able to feel this tree when you get done. You'll literally be able to run your fingers along it and feel it. But as we all know, the tree is not fully lit all the time. There's shadow and there's light. So you gotta mix them together. 
until we get down. Now we got this big, thick, textured chunk of tree. Okay, and I'm gonna take the last little bits of this and just come over about three quarters. Right, because I don't want a straight line right down the middle where they meet. So we're just grabbing it and just making it messy. Right, just like that. And now we've got this little bit of tree, we've got the light on this side of the trunk. It's looking really good. Looking really good. I like sometimes too, we can leave a little dark line on the outside of our tree just to help sort of separate it from anything behind it, right? Almost like when, a, when an illustrator takes that black line and goes around the edges of your, your drawing, right, to kind of really make it pop and stick out. That's what we're doing with this black line. Just a little bit of dark and a sea of color, right? There we go. So now we got light, dark, uh, shadow, and then the real dark. I don't want to mess around. There we go. All right, guys, this one looks fantastic. Take a step back and look. We've been painting for almost three hours. It looks really good. I like it. I like it. One thing we didn't do over here that looks good over there is add a little bit of yellow to our, our greens over on this side, right? Not much, just a little, a couple little bits here and there, there and here. Maybe there's a little bit in there, you never know, just to make it the similar, right? Just for someone who's looking for that difference in color, guys, that's all. A little bit up here, even. All right, guys, I mean, there's not much that I can do to make this look any better. It really isn't. I was trying to be sneaky with our water lines back there. Got to be sneaky sometime. Gotta have our water nice and moving, right? Mobile, it's gotta move, it's gotta feel. There we go. And it's got to be beautiful, right? Okay. Okay, I believe you. A nice little uh, log down there. We could go for more trees like this on the side. I mean, to me it looks great. But I'm always looking for more and more details we can add, right? All right, well guys, this was a mission, okay? And I literally have a mountain of brushes to go clean. If you guys like this painting, it will be available on my Etsy store. Almost forgot that little guy right there. How come you guys didn't tell me? So it'll be available in my Etsy store. You can go to etsy.com slash shop slash happy landscape art, okay? That's my Etsy shop. And that's got all the paintings, prints, t-shirts, hats, all sorts of stuff you can see. Custom hats, right? All sorts of things in the shop. So get on over there and uh, you can buy this painting. Hi, babe, you're back. Yeah, it's because you have no boats. Ah, and no signature. True. Um, what was I saying now? You were saying that everybody could visit happylittlelandscapes.com to see all your links. Oh, no, I was talking about the Etsy shop. Oh, well, they can find your Etsy link on happylittlelandscapes.com. True. But, yeah, you can go purchase this painting if you want it, if you guys are being serious. It's going to be about $500. I'm not even joking. <coughs> Bless, you. <coughs> Bless you. Make sure you get your COVID shots, right? Don't be a wiener. Get the COVID shot. Do your bit for society. It's not about whether or not you feel sick. It's about keeping someone else safe. And we have all these children running around that can't get vaccinated. And they may have, uh, someone else might have a lower immune system. You never know. So just get vaccinated, man. It's 
It's no big deal. It's a freaking little pinch, pinching arm. It didn't even hurt. And I'm a wuss for like shots and stuff. This one didn't even hurt. And they were already tracking us with our phones. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they already know everything they want to know about you. <laughs> Before you get, you know, a quote unquote robot shot into your arm with the max or whatever people think. There's so much shit crap everywhere, I have nowhere to even put any utensils. Okay, but sign if I have any small amount of liquid white left. Garipi Studio says it is a big deal for someone like me. My aunt is a doctor, by the way. Oh, that's awesome. I get a feeling that it's a big deal for him because he's not going to get it. Not the other way around. Sounds like it's a big deal for him to not get it. Maybe he has uh, <clears throat> uh, pre-existing conditions that might be helpful if other people got the shot. Or if you don't want to get it, then, you know, don't get it, but... Stay inside. Wear a mask. <laughs> we bought back the mask mandate in Vegas, so... Yeah, we're all masked up over here. Not in my studio, because it is not a public place. And we live together, so... We do? Yeah. It's not like you're doing this, you know, to strangers. All right, guys. Okay, we got the birds, we got the signature. What does everyone have to say? What do they think? Does anyone want to buy it still? Like, a lot of people go, oh, I want to buy it, and then you do something, add, like, one too many trees, and they go, oh, yeah, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> <clears throat> so I hope everyone still likes it. I had a good time painting it. You guys can learn to paint it. You can go back. You can watch the videos. The live streams. There won't be a live stream or a edited version of this video because I didn't have my dang yes, sound on will for be. two hours. No, I won't. Why? Why can't we just film it? I'm not going to voice over for two and a half hours or three hours. It's not. It's, we're not. This isn't Titanic here, okay, people? Hazel says it's beautiful. Thank you. Clean these up. Okay, what else do we have to tell you guys about? Okay, become a member on our YouTube channel, right? We have the memberships. Uh, you can sign up. It's like Netflix. It's like $7.99. You'll get Netflix. videos, you know, that other people won't be able to see. Again, I will always have something free to put out for everybody. For the person that doesn't want to pay, uh, that's fine. I have tons of free videos. I have older videos. I have newer videos, and I'll always put something out for you guys. You can check out all my links at uh, happylittlelandscapes.com you can go purchase your supplies through a my Amazon link you know right through the website you'll be able to find my Etsy shop right through my website the YouTube channel Facebook Instagram Pinterest all these different places that we're on right so go there uh, you can find literally everything besides that I hope you guys like this one you could do it on a smaller canvas uh, you can change it around and and sort of do whatever you want I'm just trying to teach you guys the techniques right also, share, share when you do yours, share the link to my page, share Happy Little Landscapes page, tag myself, okay? Uh, I can't reach everybody, so I'm counting on you guys to share the videos whenever you're doing your versions of the paintings, and then, you know, we'll just be able to get more people to come, right? The more people come, the more tiny amount of money Josh can make from YouTube, the more canvases we can buy, and, you know, keep bringing you guys free videos, keep coming and hanging out, keep chilling every weekend, right? What do you think of my log? And it's beautiful. It's cute, right? Yeah. Nice little textured, little shabby log down there. I'm going to go sit on it. It was... Put my beer. Lean my beer up against this branch. Get my fishing pole. I could even paint in a fishing pole. It's a nice little straight little line if I could get it. But, all right, well, uh, besides that, I don't know what else to say. I'm going to go list this thing on Etsy. So for you guys that were talking about, you know, wanting to purchase it, we'll see if that comes to fruition or not. Thank you to John Krasniak John, for your super chat. Right, your super chat and your... Your support of my channel, all the paintings you've purchased, you know, the, the tips that you send while we paint live, I really appreciate it. You know, a lot of times, this month I've made more in my art than I have at my real job, and it's never usually like that. So I'm very thankful for months like this when, you know, we can launch new things, create new things, sell more paintings, and uh, get more people to our, our channels, right? So again, become a member. 
Uh, it's $7.99. You can always subscribe for free. You can find me on Facebook for free. I'm all over the place for free. But if you want more than just your average person and you want to see more details and see different videos that uh, that the other person you know won't see, then join the channel. Uh, you can always sign up. I have different levels of membership. They're all all listed for what you know each membership is for, what you get with each thing. And we'll have just, more information about the phone group and classes yeah, next week. Our classes will be coming soon. I have to film some B-roll today at some point. And uh, yeah, we're going to get moving on that as soon as we can. But in the meantime, I do have classes available on my, my channel. I have these free videos that we do each week, which are sort of a class. Um, and, you know, I really love hanging out with you guys. John, you're the man for your super chat. Everyone else can super chat as well. It's just like sending me a free tip if you like what I'm doing. Helps me buy more canvases, more paints, and create more things for you guys and different techniques that I can try that you're too afraid to try. And then until you see how you know how it works, how you could do it, and make it work for you, right? So besides that, let's stop talking, babe. We always ramble on. And uh, do you want to leave a camera on for your intro? I'm not going to do one with this uh, with the sound. So oh. we'll just say goodbye, and then we'll go hang this sucker on the wall somewhere in a place that I have enough room. <laughs> you have a wonderful day, Roberta Harris. Everybody, take care. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate it. London loves talking to everybody. Come on camera, babe. No. No. Come on. No, goodbye. Goodbye, Come everybody. On. Bye. Uh, Have a right. wonderful Sunday. See you guys. Enjoy your day. Anyone that does this painting, please send it to Facebook. I'd love to see it. And uh, besides that, you guys take care. Bye bow. Right. Man, this one came out great. Until